Your time of the day and welcome back to Tales of Ether, where our schedule is crap and I have no idea how to run this game again. Uh, so, uh, disclaimer, before we begin, I'd like to remind everybody that, despite people believing so, no accents in my campaign are based on real-world equivalents. In reality, all accents, well, some accents in my game are based on shittier editions of real-life accents. So whenever I give you a shitty accent, that canon, that's how it works, and whatever you can do better is wrong. Okay? Okay. Awesome. Good. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Just want to get that out of the way. So, previously, uh, we fixed the timeline. Because you... Uh, was it last game? Yes, it was last game. You've uh, visited the palace of uh, Marchioness Orbach, I think the name was, uh, mm -hmm. to get your reward for killing the skilled tyrant and um, just show yourselves. You got your rewards, you got your armor. Uh, she tried to recruit Miles to work for her. He responded in a very rude and... Uh, Ignoble way, got punished for it, which got fixed by, you know, uh, you quickly left Lamia as quickly as you could and went straight for, well, actually you went for Chariot first, where you met Lanza's father and we fixed the timeline, and then you went for Cinnabar, you went to, uh, to the academy to try and find a way to collect enough either to hopefully fix... Uh... Jamie's body! Yes, that's his name. Uh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> that was body. Alright. And that was the last word I can say in this session to keep a PG-13. Um, you surprisingly met the uh, headmistress of the academy on the plane of air, uh, Nova Vermillion, who was extremely curious about what the fuck you're are rated uh, you're doing here <laughs> and what you know about either and what is Dalu and how he works uh, and generally seem to be more helpful than Lance has led you to believe people in Academy are or nicer than Lance thinks people in Academy are but most likely that's a plan and she's a traitor she's gonna betray you don't worry um, she said that she uh, doesn't have any such convenient tools at hand, but uh, such research was done by Alexandru, Alexandru Palis, or another clone of uh, Dalu, and hopefully he has developed a machine capable of doing so efficiently now that you can fix Dalu in time. So you build your ship, grab Nova, and went straight for Hessen. Antrim and Alexandru are supposed to be. Now, um, I hope that during the first day, uh, Miles was polite enough to offer his quarters to Nova, not make her stay in one mm -hmm. bed somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be how the only day she, you would need to do so, because starting on the second day, she has set up Nova's magnificent mansion in your cargo hold and used that uh, because it also had a lot more access to her arcane like laboratory research and other stuff she might need to help you guys uh, plus that kind of solves the problem of her consuming uh, ship's resources um, you also do get invited to dinner in that mansion every night and i think aside from miles that's one of the best dinners you've had on a consistent basis oh that place has some good stuff. Um, she mostly spends the time in transit continuing to examine uh, Dalu's orb and trying to figure out how it works and what can be done. Still as complicated as it was when she looked at it for the first time, she fails to unravel it completely, which means that it's, it's really, really complicated if she doesn't know anything about it. Uh, she does, however, uh, uh, give you a couple bits of information that she glimpsed. Um, one thing that 
amuses her is that um, while Dalu was named a construct by that golem in the facility, the body he had and the abilities this orb gave his body were basically human. He needed to sleep, he needed to breathe, he needed to eat, uh, which kind of not what constructs do on that even. So, Nova supposes that the purpose of that body was not to confuse and lie about the nature of Dalo, because, you know, not being able to bleed is kind of very obvious. Also, he had those weird memories from the very start. And while being a construct construct might have had some short-term advantages, like just being generally more powerful, uh, having a living basically living body meant that Dal was capable to evolve at the advance and improve his abilities as he continued living and do so in a way he wanted. So adapt to situations. Uh, which again is strange because Astral Construct is short term thing. It's created only for like 24 hours usually that the spell works as somebody travels to the Astral Plane. Um, More on the topic, uh, again, like, while Dalu's body could more than easily sub yeah, subside, survive, on the arcane reserves that this ether would have given him, he still needs to eat, which most likely means that this ether was there to... Novice poses anchor the body to material plane, or, well, at least not to the astral plane. And based on this ad adaptability and this suggestion, she notes that the orb has used the unique circumstances on Lamia to grab part of Pumpkin's ritual and use it to maintain the tether, to not let the soul of Dalo be yeah. whiffed wherever it could whiff. Uh, there was damage, there was significant damage, and Nova suggests you don't die again, because most likely it's not gonna hold the second time, not if you have a very, very convenient circumstances once again. And furthermore, she supposes that most likely if Dalu dies, his soul isn't going to have it or hell. It's most likely it could go to the astral plane. And that's kind of like Limbo. So, I don't know, I mean, easier to get there than to get to hell, but <laughs> not a fun place to be when you're dead, once you're dead. Um, yeah. um, I, I assume that um, in this, you know, like screwed up state that like I can be in on this conversation or at least hear it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, your orb isn't moved. So, like, she yeah. spends all of the time in the um, med bay examining yeah. it, and if you stay in your aquarium, then yes, you can see her, you can talk to her, she talks to you. I mean, she's yeah. gonna talk to you, she's gonna ask you a bunch of questions about, like, your memories, how do you feel, like, hmm. do you feel whatever but she does to the all because she's trying to be very careful and not damage it. So she says all of this with the crew, so me included. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Like, most likely you learn first, and then she summarizes to everybody, like, during dinner. Uh, which, technically, mm -hmm. you are invited, but cannot attend. <laughs> um, yeah, but... She's very curious to find out more about Dalu, and, you know, souls are usually not a thing that can be observed and examined. Uh, but... Here we have this. Um, there's one more thing I want to say. Was it? Uh, bo -bo 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 -bo. I don't remember. Yeah, 
Okay, I think I said the key points because I was riding on my bike and coming up with this plot. I forgot. <laughs> uh, uh, question: yeah. We still have Ilonu on ship, right? Yes. Okay, gotta catch them all. And technically, Ilonu <laughs> will mostly be chilling in the mansion as well because, again, like you don't like. Two people have to stay during the day in the mansion for most of the day because otherwise your ship begins to fail most like air production does and it, stuff like that. Does it if we have the spell that just okay, I'll, needs you, so I'll many do, of us? I, I guess you can do that. I mean, oh it's God, just we can like double the crew either, works. Way. <laughs> either way works, I think. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, um, also I think during that trip you 100% finish, no, you did it earlier, like the armor is on and whatever final crafting you wanted to do, you should also have time to do. Remember, oh, what was it, what was the thing you sent me about the armor? Did I send it? Yeah. Did I give you the armor? Yes, uh, the heavy hammer could be saved until I convert. Okay. Well, it's not very uh, useful immediately, but. Or to be great as a family church. I mean, it is very useful. The, the downside is that it uh, cuts my movement to seven meters, I think. I see. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, my, my mobility is lens. <laughs> But, I mean, you have a ranged attack. You don't really need mobility, do you? Uh, true. Also true. <laughs> Unless on, you're on an open field and you have 10 snipers shooting at you, then you should move. Did you upgrade I your mean, range to one kilometer? Yes. But, but then, that's one of the, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a plus fine. two upgraded to kilometer and, uh, <laughs> and uh, an invisible if I want it to be. And that's why How I took stealth, can... because I thought maybe assassinate something, but no. Can you even see someone at a kilometer range? Yes. You on can. The yes. Islands, depending on the islands, I mean... On island. Visibility range. Right? Depending on... Yeah, on that. Okay, you probably have to stand on a hill. I mean, honestly, I'm pretty sure, like, that range of... Almost, like, the high range of even an assault rifle by these rules, most likely, is going to be used on, like, Seared of the Mount, you're ambushing somebody from a long time ago, like, no battle map is ever going to be more like that, I don't know, 100 meters, unless you, you know, like, shh, downscale it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, so uh, anything anybody else wants to do during the trip? Anything you came up with, wanted to do, talk, finish, craft? No. Good. All right. Can I wear the armor? I, I, fin yeah. I finished my gun modifications. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, you should. You should so yeah. I can crit on 19 now. Y'all need to pay attention because oh we my don't God. have the nice green bubble. Wait, what did, is crit just a normal crit? You roll twice the dice, or is it max damage? How does it work? Yeah, it's an it's additional one d six, right? No? Two. Well, that, you double the dice, yeah. Yeah. There's no rules in the game, so I just use the D and D rule because why not? Okay. Okay. Um... Now just roll high. <laughs> if you see a thirty-three or higher, that means that I crit. <laughs> What the uh, fuck is that? Okay, that's, that's interesting. All right. Um, okay, so, yeah. Points oh, as well, because you're very good control. But I remember how it works. There we go. All right, yeah. So. Uh, your ship comes out of your slipstream ja uh, the jump and into the Hesse sector as you head directly towards the island of Manshine. Um You see that um, more like, I guess, on your... Um, what did I call it? Adar or something? Uh, that uh, a lot of the islands here are like fractured the smaller pieces which have drifted off of them and the sites from the Manshaim aren't really inhabited. They're just like there was an island fractured, got separated, and uh based on the information that likely Bobby knows and Lance most likely will know is that like pretty much every single island here was 
at some point connected to like Slovos lands and some of them got fractured and there are parts of ruins being exploited by Mindsheim and Mindsheim itself has some weird stuff going on on it. Um, traveling of half a day, no, for a day coming within visual of the island you do indeed see all the weird stuff that's going on with the Mindsheim because um, it looks like some kind of giant has walked over the island and just dropped metal eggshells over it because the island is pockered in these craters whose walls rise up made of metal maybe at some point in time they have been domes but have fallen or collapsed with time and the lights of the cities lights of life are all focused concentrated to almost like blinding solid light from this distance within these craters within these eggshells the central one um, also has a spire rising from the very center of the eggshell and staring into the sky not sure how big it is, but a kilometer, maybe? Definitely not anything that modern society can construct. And each crater or each eggshell themselves is several kilometers for the small ones to maybe like 10 kilometers in diameter for the bigger one. Um, there's not much in terms of forestation. There are like patches of uh, forests and groves, but they all look very manscaped. Like similar types of trees, fairly even, like it has been planted and grew eventually. The territory around these eggshells is carved into fields, into pastures. There are some lakes which also look very geometrically shaped as a round or rectangular uh, with straight almost canals connecting them and irrigating these islands um, I have a feeling like if you're sick from Lamia and fucked up shit that lives on it Manshine doesn't have any of that <laughs> it's a park um, a parking lot yeah it's a parking lot well not a lot, but definitely. Uh, when you say these uh, eggshells, yeah. do they? Um, is it also like? Do we see only the upper half of it, and does it have like? I don't know. They... Breaks and the sides where people leave, yeah. or is it yeah. really I mean, just like the a, upper half giant, of an egg? Yeah, uh, but like the metal part is what rises from the ground that you see, and each eggshell is like jagged in different places. Some of them have like grooves or cuts through them and you see kind of like yeah. transportation hubs coming out of those grooves and the cities inside of them are themselves kind of like in a very lightly sloped crater so it does feel like at some point this was a bubble or a dome of some kind no what reason you have um you uh, dock at uh, Manchheim without uh, much of that problem. Uh, the port is incredible. Like you dock in their uh, metal arms that come out of the dock, like carefully grab your ship and put it to a halt. There is a swarm of propellered uh, golems that fly out of the hangar and begin like checking out your ship you immediately get like hey do you need refueling hey do you need resupply like <laughs> messages appear on your navigation screen uh, um quick question yeah. why is our ship at 52 out of 60 hit points do we need repairs that's not hit points is that that is not hit point yes what is that that's food Look. Oh, okay. that's days of supply never mind <laughs> and it's definitely not that high. Yeah. One second. Um... Uh, how many days have passed since we've left Lamia? Just for uh, uh, strain calculations. 
Oh, since you left Lamia, you left Lamia, I think, on the 20... No. I, I have the 29th, maybe the 30th of uh, December. Uh, yeah, I think it was the previous oh, one. Oh, no, that was the old, that was the old one, right? That's yeah, not the new one. Yeah, I think you left six days after that. Okay, so January 6th. No, no, 4th of July? Uh, 4th of January? Most likely. Okay, I but mean, how many days? Then? You have so much money that... I don't think you care too much if you pay... Yes. For, for, uh, but how many days? And today is the what? Today is uh, 12th of February. So eight days? Oh, February. February. Wait, that's a February. month. Okay, yeah, no strain at all. I mean, yeah, yeah, you definitely have fully recuperated. Uh, I mean, you had to like travel, like you made several jumps. So you went like Lamia. Uh, yeah, to, to um, uh, Helios, then Aqua, yeah, then yeah, Hesse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you traveled for a long time and it was like... 6, 12, 18... At least 24, 26 days is just the jumps, I think. Wow, okay. Yeah. And then you have the rank 2 drive, so it would have been double for a basic ship. Uh, right. Wouldn't have been Here, possible. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you like require some resupply over there, like you click on those pop ups and you see like those same golems, just like drag pipes, connect them to your ship, and you start immediately getting pumped with fuel, water, whatever you need. Uh, very quickly, very automated. Um, you uh, do have to get uh, visas basically, uh, which is gonna cost like 50 credits uh, per person who disembarks. Uh, But an Abbey is gonna get his own visa, pay for himself because he has a salary now. Because he thinks, if you're in trap, he's gonna go get some online courses. <laughs> okay. Um, however, as you are getting that visa, you are warned that that visa lasts a week. It's a visitation visa. By end of the week, you either need to have completed a job. Any kind of job for anybody on Manshine or be in the process of being employed. For your visa to be extended. If you are not employed or have done something, your visa expires and you need to leave. By done th something, is that also trade? Could be trade? Uh, no, you need to complete a job, a quest, a favor, any contract exchange. Okay. Uh, of not um, trading nature. Yeah. So, speaking of trade, we have four tons of expensive clothes um, that Not we Lamia? bought on. No, no, no. Those on, that what we bought on Lamia, we sold on Helios oh, okay. and or on Chariot. And uh, this one is from Chariot. All right. Uh, so I also never put in the million we got. It's the most expensive stuff. Yes. Yes, it's seven um, k per ton is what we bought it at, which is the average, I think. Oh, me! <laughs> uh, you bought them on Chariot. Uh, they sell 12,000 per ton. Nice! Without negotiating. That's crazy. Yeah, that sounds good. After that million, I think this is like chump change now. <laughs> I mean, yes, but... yeah, especially since I didn't buy that much of it. Oh, is Menchheim was like only a that perfect one. place to upgrade to all the ship upgrades slash whatever we want Manchime to do? Menchheim is still five, uh, but if you intend uh, to upgrade, please remember that uh, like you have a, ma a week unless you right. do a stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, also remember that I think this is important for Dalo and Miles. This is an island where you can technically go and buy a Force Paris, which is like a, sh uh, 
Arcana Tech Shield. Oh, because it's still okay. Time. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but remember, all it does you is like it takes up your hand and it gives you plus one to your AC. That's still good. It's five percent less chance. But still. Um, also, like, like they're not being unreasonable. Like, if you can't or like don't have an opportunity to find a job of of your own, they do have like um, quest boards. Public board, yeah. I mean, this is not Lamas of those quest boards are more along the lines of you need to go into the sewers and clean out the oozes out of it. Like, dirty, unpleasant jobs that nobody really wants to do. But hey, it's a job. Um, Alright. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, I assume you get visas for. Uh, everyone. Everyone. Nova gets her visa, Lona gets her, his visa. Uh, what are you doing with Dalo? Are you him behind? I think he does. I think he doesn't need a visa though. Sure, but like um, we, I think we first need to find. Okay, maybe in character. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, perhaps I will should... tell you just as, so. Sorry, so it's not forgotten okay. to probably write down on the mirror if I overhear you talking about the uh, shields thing. That it's not priority, but you pick me up one. Of course. And I think we should first try and locate this uh, Alexan Alexandru fella. Um. Yeah, we can't just stroll around with Dalu, right? That's not an option. <laughs> I mean, we would need to transport that orb somehow, so I don't know. No, think leave so. it there. Right, so where might we find Alexandria? Let's see his files. Bad idea. He enrolled into the Mensheim University, skipped grades, went on to, to receive an, a doctorate, was scouted by Atlas. Okay! Became the head separate laboratory developing faster this than is mine. not a... Yeah. This is not an exact, but I think like this picture kind of like works for how one of the central cities would look like on... <clears throat> Cyberpunk, I think. Ascent. It's from Ascent. Uh, right, let's just go to Atlas, I guess, and ask them, uh, where's, where's Alexandru? Just waltz right in. Um... Also, am I the only one who doesn't see Lucas? Uh, no, no. He's, he's eating. eating. Ah, he's eating, okay. Um, if I remember correctly, he left Atlas at some point... Because oh, it didn't yeah, say anything. Uh, head of separate laboratory. Like you know his company. His company is the Azure. Azure. Azure, yeah. Azure something. Can okay. we look them up on the local um, arcane Internet. net and see what kind? You know what kind of uh, arcane page they have, and uh, <laughs> they have a place of oh business. Oh my god! It's super listed. corporate. Or something like it before we go out there. Come on. Um... The Azure Gate, yes. The Azure Gate he is the name of his company. Um. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, uh, you can do that. Uh, and actually, it's not Atlas, it's Atlant, but whatever. Because uh, Atlas is in Russian, Atlant is in English. No, the other way around. Yes, the other way around. Russian version. Um, yeah, you look uh, them up on the. Uh, Local, either web, either web, yeah, either web, 
and uh, like they like they have the they have their have their domain, they have their website. Uh, it's not uh, like it doesn't have a catalog. Uh, like you can't like go and like buy a slipstream drive from them directly. It just like has you know like for business inquiries contract contacts. Because you get a feeling that like this is a kind of business where like you just don't go in and buy something. You need to already be like in the market and have a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. Um, we do have that. We do have that. Uh, you have Does our a lot of money qualify for this? Definition of a lot of money. Uh, I mean, technically, like I think, like a Ford Drive engine costs like four hundred thousand baseline for the ship of your size. Uh, I believe. I have to check. Cost multiplied by ten. Forty thousand. Yeah, four hundred thousand. Um, yes. Yeah. So I guess yeah. Like basically, like this drive costs as much as, almost as much as your stripped up ship costs. Like by default, you know, like market version of your ship costs. Mm -hmm. Well, it costs like two thirds of your ship. Yeah. Like because uh, your ship costs like around three. How the turntables? Yeah. <laughs> um, Right, but uh, you do know that uh, his laboratory is basically placed in the central uh, town, let's call it, with the spire, so you need to go there. So, uh, again, what are you doing with Dalo? Are you leaving him on the ship for now? Yes. Okay. Um, so, you leave, like, the star, or more like, you go through the starport, actual, and they do have, like, they have a lot of... Um, Outlets basically of different like like equipment shops basically in the starport for people who just like come in, buy stuff and leave because you know like visa is very short, so you could buy stuff on the way out or whatever. Um, and on the outskirts of that starport, uh, on a starport skyport, wrong system. Uh, you, uh, it's all still like basically like. The side of the starport, like half of that eggshell was kind of like cracked in half, and starport was like layers of this uh, crater. Layers, uh, some of them were just you know, like mechanical, technical places, some of them were docks, and so on. And so you were most walking underground, but uh, compared to Volus or other places where you spent a lot of time underground, almost. Like, you know you're underground because there's not too much, like, outside that you can see, but there's still, like, a lot of light, and it's really nice daylight. There are a bunch of uh, these giant crystals which just, like, roll images of, like, fields, grazing cows, farmers smiling. Uh, there are potted plants and like small plazas with uh, aquariums and fountains and people are chilling and like eating stuff uh, and you can like go on kind of ground through the stuff you come upon a underground uh, lighting rail station uh, where you border into this tubular train and board it shoots uh, out of the skyport and begins very swiftly taking you through the plates and fields of the mansion. It does come above ground at some point and you can see those honestly really boring sights. Uh, I guess there's the excitement of speed. Big windows of this train. It's a very smooth ride. Uh, some of you might get a bit car sick because it's a bit too fast, especially if you stare at the window. But the ride is very smooth. The train doesn't have wheels, it levitates above the rail basically, and it sparks <laughs> lightning in every direction. Uh, and after about 
an hour of a ride uh, and passing through like two smaller uh, crater towns uh, this two train which by the way is gonna cost another 50 credits per person for the ticket <laughs> uh, arrives at the or dock workers yeah uh, dock workers on uh, Manshine yes. earn a lot less money because they're golems and they earn no money. Now yeah. the dock supervisors earn more money. <laughs> like they get their usual like 100, 150 credits per day, you know, like normal money. Not the best money, but eh, good enough. Um, at the Spire City of Kobol. Um you disembark and see these kind of tear terraced uh, building blocks all around you uh, kind of like attached to the walls of the crater going down 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 the very strange um, very geometrically correct streets where they basically kept you know like the radial circles or more like the circles and then the radial spokes coming down towards the spire uh, must be pretty weird to ride down the streets because they are always at a descent but uh, you see uh, and most likely use uh, like a rented basically like taxi uh, where uh, again like it has no uh, driver you just tell it where to go like there's like a tiny golem sitting in the front like that's turned around just roger roger and gets it down the street wherever you need to go uh and most likely you need to get this two of those because you have a lot of people with you yeah and we're we're just a really weird looking bunch of people i, I told you Lance this is the only one night. looks normal <laughs> this place was a nightmare i told you Look at them, you can't even drive by yourself anymore. You know what these guys do when it gets dicey? Well, it doesn't get dicey here. It's... What, what do they do? Sub subpar decision making is what I've heard. Very subpar decision making. The head turns around, like not looking at his road. According to statistics, implementations of golem-driven vehicle has decreased the amount of deaths due to traffic accident by 95%. Propaganda, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's what they want you to tell, yeah. <laughs> but real drivers, you know, they know what they're doing. In comparison. My arcana tech is far superior to your reaction time, mid bag. <laughs> they don't nope. even have manners around here, it's horrible. Shitty so, driving and oh, bad manners. We're in the city with the huge one yes. kilometer spire? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And yes, yeah, you're like now basically on the outskirts of the city, the spire just dominates it. Because uh, from like above, you just saw like the height of it. Now you understand that it's also thick as fuck. And you know, like, <laughs> kind of like, not papers, but the other way, like flattens at the bottom, and there's just basically like a pyramid that like goes up. And uh, like, oh, there's not but there's only you... one. But there's only one ball beneath it, is what you're saying. <laughs> there's no balls, there's just the conus. Uh, it's a very weird ball. Uh, it's a very unbalanced shaft, yes. Uh, and that's actually like not where you need to go. Though you do see like the giant, uh, basically like billboards of the major corporations that run this place, like neon signs uh, on the spire. And finally enough, uh, I didn't think about this when I found this picture, but a giant A for Atlant would be the major uh, billboard or like logo on this spire. Uh, but you need to go uh, actually like more, uh, not quite the outskirts, but uh, more industrial area of this place. And as you ride through the town, you do see that it's again, like it's so inorganic. Like when cities are, well, cities grow, 
So, you know, like people build some houses and they build a school because they need a school and they have kids, so they make a park next to the school. Here it's like, here is a right slice of city, which is just like apartments, 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 but then suddenly building pass by and it's again tall building, so it's like a wall as you're passing through it. And in some cases you literally like the road passes through the building. And then you come out of the tunnel and there's just a giant slice of a park. Which is huge and impressive and has a lake. But again, it's a manicured park with wonderful grass and those high, high not hyper, but people. Non allergic trees on it, you know, that make no pollen and don't send trash around. Uh, okay. Yeah, there are no pigeons anywhere. Which is really Some weird. Some people because, might call that paradise, yeah. Yeah, because pigeons. Even came to Plane of Air somehow. Don't ask me how, but they came the there. Skyrats. Yeah, it's very natural. They're birds, you know. They <laughs> should be here. Um, and then you come to this like more industrial area where there's a bit more space between buildings, and they look a bit more like if it blows up, it's gonna be contained. <laughs> uh, right. Until you uh, come to like the outskirts of um, uh, like several very boring uh, stone like rectangular buildings like two three story tall which are actually pretty small standing next to a um, uh, bubble dome like made of triangular metal is this? Yes. I'm not a G20, like a lot more sides to it, but similar design. Uh, and okay. it feels to be like, like four stories tall, maybe pretty big, like 100 meters uh, in diameter, most likely. Uh, and they do have like the like this blue gate logo uh, of like triangular, like basically like A to gate. Uh, Logo tip on the um, gate wall on the outskirts of the location. Question: Did we bring Olo Elonu? Uh, of sure. Team. I mean, if you <laughs> my... didn't bring Elonu, he came anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay, we yeah, have to bring him brother. because I just did the two of the meeting. You know, uh, it's like uh, look alike. I mean, just for record, nobody's coming along. Us. Yeah, of course. Yeah. She came so far. Why wouldn't she? And got so. Got so. F okay, never mind. Plus, you also get the feeling that, you know, going, hey, we have a look alike of your chief engineer here uh, is gonna get you. No, like, that's not gonna be as fast as, hey, no worries. The headmistress of. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that lady. <laughs> um, yeah. Which is basically how it goes. Uh, is uh, again, like they don't really have um, reception because they are more like a manufacturing company rather than a sales office <laughs> kind. Uh, but there is a, a control point. Uh, which works uh, well enough and uh, you inform uh, your purpose of visit. Uh, uh, Nova impresses them with her credentials. Uh, they immediately say that, yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna get you in, and uh, they get you in. Although they will. Uh, Actually, it would be even earlier, it would be at the Skyport. Uh, you do need to uh, basically either leave behind or disable your weapons. Sure. Well, what weapons? Is it sufficient to put, put the safety in on my gun? <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, they're like, you can take the gun with you, but basically, uh, they watch as you unclip it. 
and then they give you like a dummy clip that you put in and they lock it in so you can't load the gun anymore. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I got to make situations where like if somebody was playing a monk, they would be like, yeah, let's go beat somebody up. <laughs> What's a monk in the Star that number? Uh, I think you can build uh, brawlers. You can build brawlers. No, there's uh, in the sun, in the black sun, there's like a just punch class, like something Yama King or something is basically like a monk negotiator. Aren't they basically like lawyers? <laughs> they're <laughs> lawyers. Can't they? They, they are. They are. They, they have like. Uh, I think they're punchy lawyers. I'm pretty sure they're punchy lawyers. Uh, they're they're they punchy? I, I don't yeah. remember. It might be true. Yeah. I mean, you can. Yeah. Anyway, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think you were asking me a question. Was I saying something? I think you were saying something about about the getting uh, after in. yeah, because now we've had our weapons yeah, disabled yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah, whatever yeah. for those who yeah. have so weapons. You don't need to do that at the checkpoint. That's what I was thinking about basically. Um, and. Uh, like the, 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 the security basically like gets you into one of those boring buildings where they do have like a small visitation area, like a super tiny, like with a water fountain and a single potent ficus plant. Uh, and uh, they do have like a person there, like on the phones, uh, sitting uh, or ask like wait for a moment. She kind of gets somebody. Uh, and uh, you chill for like a couple minutes till you uh, see this. Actually, I think I have put some. There we go. Ah, uh, that's like not quite 180. Like, a slightly shorter than 180, but, like, heavy set, like, wide-shouldered, uh, red skin, like, flat, as bulbous nose, sharpish ears, giant bushy beard, uh, hobgoblin, uh, going towards you, he's dressed in basically, like, a blue jumpsuit, like, not unlikely what Bobby likes to wear when he tinkers with stuff. Uh, just or like, liked to wear? Yeah. Well, I mean, he still has to wear half of that suit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like to wear. Uh, though it does look to be like slightly like more padded and reinforced, uh, like more like high grade of protection. You assume than whatever you need to do when you build a gun. Uh, and uh, he has like long braided hair, which I kind of like, just put away like into like this folded ponytail to get out of the way. And uh, he wears these like circular glasses, uh, with, like rose uh, tint to them. And uh, he kind of like looks at uh, all of you and uh, and like like looks, looks, double take, looks, looks, triple take. No. Greetings, hi. <clears throat> um, I assume you're Alexandru? No, I'm not Wait, Alexandru. The bug it's a bugbear, sorry. Uh, it's a hobgoblin. Oh, uh, hob sorry, sorry, sorry. How very uh, racist assume... of you. Sorry, <laughs> I assume you will be taking Do us we to all goblinoids look the same to you? It's it's hard to see through this, and I Bond just towards the helmet. Of mine, I know. I am Kalad. Mister Palace Kalad. is currently occupied, but I have come to greet you and bring you to meet him. He's in a separate building and needs to go through the process. He really wants to meet you, and he will meet you. Is to swear me on, but he cannot. It is the Kenze security and 
safety regulations. Why are you looking at me like that? Do I sound strange? No, not at all. Right. If you would come with me, I'll bring you to a table where we can sit and wait. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, so he gets like a bit further into the building, and you basically see that like this very boring buildings, like like one part of them is like almost empty cubicles with uh, like they have the workstation and so on, but mostly empty. And then he gets also a place which is like um, very similar to Bobby's workshop, the part of it where he basically like, designs stuff like with the screens, with the giant tables full of blueprints and stuff and like other people are like running around in similar uh, like uh, coats or jumpsuits uh, checking like machining small pieces doing stuff uh, you pass by a couple of rooms that have big thick glass separating it from the hallway uh, and people there like testing something like here like even through the window and then they just people just go like start from running behind the wall as you hear it like, like <laughs> from the inside ah not again it has blown up it has exploded anyway and um, he brings you like through a door into like basic like, a meeting room with a round table and uh, fake leather chairs and another water fountain and he says right Mr. Pali should come terminate in another 10 minutes. I will de actually tell me why you're here. I'll debrief him in the process to make this go faster. If it we is are... not a secret and you can talk to me about it. Of the record, I am his right hand man. Um, we're, we are uh, interested in ether collecting uh, a technology um, that's the gist of it without going into longer details ah are you selling anything uh, selling no bitch either is a bitch would have been nice to buy some all right, I understand. I'm gonna go, Mister. I'm gonna go grab Mister. Pallis. Sit here. I'll be back. How did? You, what was his name? Car? Car? Kalad. My name is Kalad. K a l l a a d. Kalad. Got it. Kalad Wartzenschneger. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was like what other stupid accent can I make that would be actually possible to do I like it ah, that's a good one <laughs> it's very recognizable yeah. you know so. yeah it also kind of works for the location you know it's like Menschheim never, Mensch ne never make up those names for your setting and then get like three four German speaking people to your campaign <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go like, the, yeah, that's it wrong. <laughs> that makes it more difficult for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mention German is uh, is a man, right? Human. Human. Yeah, okay. man, man or human. So so Mensheim is basically human city. Home human city. home. Yeah. Human home. Okay. I mean, it's very stupid, but I did have I think Lucas consult me about the names. Okay. I mean, there are so many stupid names, you know, like. I mean, I mean to, be, to be fair, you know, like that's how cities are named. It's like, what's yes, here? It's a, hill. It's, exact, it's green. There, green hill green city. Hills, right? <laughs> there yeah. is, there is a, a town uh, in Germany called Blödesheim, and that means <laughs> uh, stupid home. <laughs> <laughs> that's a stupid name for a stupid yeah. city. <laughs> down. Down. Uh, all right. Um. Yeah, so you chill around for a little bit longer and then uh, like the door opens and Kalat 
comes back again, followed by like a man can, like like, like kind of like fixing clothes, like he just like changed his clothes. It's kind of like dressed in like basically like, basically like pants, uh, slacks, and uh, high necked uh, woolen sweater of some kind. Uh, like kind of fixing his glasses, so we see the bald head of indeed. Um, Alexander Polis, as you, he looks like slightly older with slightly bigger cheeks, and he is on the dossier that uh, you have. But it is most definitely him. You recognize him. Uh, kind of goes. Hello. I am Alexandru Palis. I was told that you wish to meet with me, yes? You talked Indeed. about Isa, yes? Well, that's part of it. It's much longer story than that. Uh, well, I am looking at all of your faces, and aside from Seeing a very respectable figure. I am also seeing another face that I seem to recognize. That is how I think I looked when I just got my beard 20 years ago. So something is make me think that that is part of the reason you have oh, indeed. come to see me. Well, that, that, that is, that is, that is. Um, so, where do I start? <laughs> we, from the very start. We had, well, he's still with us, kind of, but we had, we have a friend called Dalu, and he is a special and the way that he looked the same, like you and uh, Ilonu over here. Oh, you have but he, another one. Yes, there are actually four of your kind and, and Dalu. Uh, when I say your kind, you're uh, human. Uh, normal humans. Uh, Dalu is a bit of a special case, but I'll get to that soon enough. Um, on or travels we've uh we've met with uh two uh, with ilonu and another one of this group of lookalikes and they everyone seems to have a, a sort of a history with the px565 and also perhaps a mystery around the lookalikeness of of things anyways um, Dalu has sadly, uh, his body is, uh, did he die? Is that like a technical term? I can, he died, but his soul is still tethered to a, a Conatec verification chamber that we have on the ship. And we're looking to restore his special body, which, oh, Right, now I need to get to that point. <laughs> uh, right, so as I said, the lookalikes are human, but Dalu was different. He didn't bleed, and he was mostly made up out of... What, was it nitrogen, I think? Um, and ether, of course. Nova kind of like uh, jetted depths here on the elbow. Um, Kind of like yeah, thank takes you. out like a, a folder <laughs> that she passes over to Alexander and goes, I have summarized the concept of our visit here based on what research I've had time to do in the 10 days I've traveled with these people on their ship. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's much more, much more productive than just drinking. You have a good heart. You just have a hard time getting to proper points in proper time. Starts going through it. Well, are we... Uh, 
been researching some very, uh, very interesting things over the past uh, few years. But just to look at the graphs, uh, this is the mother of all info dumps that I have ever seen within five minutes. This is a lot. Certainly is. So uh, the remains of your non-expired, not quite me, dull look like they are on your ship. Yes, yes they are. And I presume you require some ether. Yes, in order to try and recreate a body for him, I think. And this complicates things. What, what did you say? Mm. What? Uh, if well, and only, uh, I think? This complicates things. Uh, you see, I uh, do not have much remaining either. I am afraid that my attempts to procure more have mostly fate failed over the past 10 years. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have uh, enough for just one uh, attempt. So, if you wish to have it, uh, you would need to work for it and replenish it for me. Uh, good contracted work is exactly what we need in order to also extend our visas. What do you mean? And in what order would that happen in? Well, only one task. Have we met before, young man? Sorry, let me let me introduce everyone. I'm uh, Captain Miles Ruber. This is my crew, and this is Bobby Glass, Lance. Uh, Winnell, uh, who else is with us? Is Watanabe with us? Uh, no, no, Watanabe is no. chilling. Elon, well, is Lono. Or... No, no, Elon, you yes. haven't met me before, but you know my last name, Avery. Ah, yes. Are you mm -hmm. a nephew? A... No, no, son. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, my condolences. I believe that is. And we just got a message. I see. A few months back, after ten years, first. Whatever. Hmm. Well, but again. This... She used to work for for them. In the. A... In a sense, yes. Was she the one who got you the first batch of ether that you were talking about? No. But... Let me... Let me get it from the start. And by the way, after I have finished looking through this paper, which was quite a revelation. I am looking around and seeing more and more revelations and every single one of you because don't think I am not noticing the frame that you are using as your lower half of the body. That is that is very rare. I'm well aware. Well, thankfully for you, not many people are. Where did we begin? I think we can find something in your size. I think I need to show you something to explain. Uh, walk with me, I will start the story. 
You know the purpose of this laboratory, this company, yes? Construction of the three Ship surprises. engine? Yes. Fourth, fourth generation? Fifth generation? Yes. He doesn't exactly know what he's talking about, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's... Isn't it sub one, two, three, four? Doesn't it work? Yeah, like but it's that? not. It's not a generation. A, it's not generation. B, okay. uh, technically, you don't even you don't even really know that number four exists. It's meta mm -hmm. knowledge. Like, yeah, I know one, two, three, and then it's okay, like, okay, okay, okay. concepts. Okay, uh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, yes, although uh, we have been trying to uh, push the boundaries of. Conventional slip stream transportation. Mm -hmm. um, as like he gets uh, gets up and like starts walking down the office and like stairs, 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 long hallway. Uh, he was like whispers, um, "Palat, can you go and find them some the suits of appropriate size?" But, yes, I will. Off ahead of you, fast pace. Um, Alexander continues. I have been experimenting with a certain concept that is related to either and the nature of your request. By the way, did those say when he's gonna come back? No, not really. Well, it was. Uh, you see? At the moment, uh, the method by which a ship travels from one island to another is through the labyrinth winds, creating a protective twister that helps it travel safely. But we are still talking about speed of 200 kilometers per hour, perhaps. It's impressive compared to the normal speed of these ships, but still, very, very slow. Are any of you of, right from you of course, Miss Mayon, of arcane persuasion? Or aware of the concepts of plane shifting, teleportation? Oh, uh, some rudimentary knowledge was shared with us. <laughs> But when you plane shift with a spell plane shift, you require an object from the place you're going. As a name, you're supposed to go from plane to plane, from material plane to plane of fire to plane of air, and so on. In theory, you can even go to the upper planes or the lower planes, uh, but there are very little people going around with things from hell, so we do not go there. The planes are separated by the astral plane, which also contains gates for every single plane. You can go to the astral plane, you can find a gate, go anywhere you want. But when you plane shift, you go not from point A towards point B, but you go from point A to point B, like teleportation. To avoid the distance. So my theory was, if you could plane shift a ship to the astral plane and then back here, you could maybe go from one island to another a little bit. Quicker. But those kind of the machinations require a lot of ether, a lot of it. And I will not talk about the very, very lengthy methods by which I have obtained my original supply, but I have enough remaining for trip to the astral plane and return. My idea was to make a ship go to the astral plane. A lot of ether, 
return back to this view. Can I can I quickly ask why do you need to go to the astral plane to get Eve Ether? Um Well, the astral plane connects everything. It has the most ether. It's the only place where you can, I think, harvest ether. Is he telling the truth? Make me an inside check. Hal A Art Double A Z. Um He at least seems to believe what he's saying. Doesn't mean he isn't wrong necessarily, but he believes. Is ether only naturally occurred in, in the astral plane? Can it not be found in other planes? Uh defined naturally. Astral plane well, is the only plane that has those connecting gates. I suppose if a gate opens a plane of air or a material plane to any other plane, then there will be some ether around such a gate. As a matter of fact, that is how we have gathered some of the original supply. And ether is only uh, um, found near those gates and nowhere else? Here, yes. On the plane of astral? I do not know. We have constructed prototype devices for collection. Prototype ships are potentially capable of traveling to the astral plane. And this is the part where like you've like basically like, been given those jumpsuits, you've been putting them on, you've been talking. We can like went through like any decontamination the contamination the decontamination the process. Are they are they any different than just normal from what, suits? from the visual or from the visual jumpsuit thing or like uh, not, not, not really no they're basically as far as I understand the point is they need to remove your clothes which might have uh, dust contaminants and so on and give you protective clothes that give okay. you some protection plus they know those clothes are clean and so on but it's mostly just so going like, into an intel chip so yeah, you're most yeah, yeah 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 you're mostly being like de-dusted like de-static and so on uh, it goes. Um, I uh, have been constructing these ships for a long, long time. It work. You go through the uh, like. Like when there are two doors curtain. and the chamber in the middle. Uh, decompression chamber oh, or um, the lobby. Purify uh, the what's foyer. It what's it called? The in betweens, but we all know what we're talking about. I all know what they're talking about. Water lock. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm like yeah. the water is like in the back of my head, but I can't Air remember it. Yeah. Airlocks or yeah, yeah, kind of like airlock. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, you figure out from the uh, space that you've been brought to that dome that you've seen from the outside, and you see that it is in fact a hangar, and standing in the middle of the hangar, like raised upon scaffolding is a sleek silver ship like a bullet shaped shaped almost like a bullet very different compared to fable though you do see like a rather like asymmetrical jutting uh towers on one side and supports that hold 
assail the size of the ship on the other side. And you just see as like on one of the scaffolding somebody is like arc welding some lettering to the outside of the ship. And you like see as a word Pathfinder. And Alexander goes, the problem is not all of them have worked. First moves aside and you see, oh! Um, Astrid, Avery, Avery? Your Whatever you like. Master was one of the best navigator specialists I have ever worked with. She was, apologies for this, also one of the worst employees I've ever had. She and the crew have traveled on the first of the ships. She has named the Jeopardy. Ten years ago. A bit more than that. We know that the ship has reached the astral plane. We have received the signal. But it did not leave it. No other ship we have sent, as finders 1, 2 and 3, have succeeded at reaching the astral plane. The problem with drive I have assembled is that you need to calibrate it. You cannot go from here to where you went. Do we have anybody left? <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, yes, me. <laughs> I'm playing. It feels like I'm talking to two people. It is a bit. All right, sure. Am I being said boring? <laughs> no. Um, Pathfinders 1 through 3 have failed to reach the astral plane. They must have been destroyed in transit. Wait, are they destroyed? Because we see them lined up, right? No, no, no. No, oh, we see number four. Yeah, he has... He, basically, he flies, it has he four has on built, his side. Like, basically, he has built four ships. The first, oh, well, okay. five ships. The first one was named Jeopardy by uh, Astrid. She and her crew took it, traveled, arrived to Astral Plane, back. and never came back. Pathfinder 1, Pathfinder 2, and Pathfinder 3 are lost without having to reach the Astral Plane. What happened to them? Nobody knows. Okay, okay. But I thought they were lined up. Okay. No. I have been sitting on this last ship for several years, modifying it, trying to prepare for the travel. It is a very, very small selection, but I'm starting to get a feeling it is not about only the ship or the drive. It is about the navigator. The pilots. Not the pilot. It is very easy to pilot these ships. What is the problem? Is to calculate the jump. That is why I have said that Astrid was one of the best navigators I have worked with. Terrible working critics. Very, very flighty. But a good navigator. They are rare. The last navigator I have tried to recruit on Aurelo has disappeared. So I have been sitting on my Is that the dwarf woman we kidnapped? Yes. You should have maybe set out of character first. But... I did, I did. If did I, if it's not with a British accent, it's out of character. If you think I recognize your British accent... <laughs> What? Yeah. Get the hell out of here! You're grossly mistaken. It is about as bad as my German accent. Okay. I'm offended. And by that, you also offended him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um... Well, it seems that since at least Jeopardy 1 was able to... Just the Jeopardy. ...reach... A Jeopardy, sorry. Was able to 
at least to reach the astral plane, and your pathfinders uh, were not. Uh, that th the the key to success is in the name. So just change that name to Jeopardy Two or something, and perhaps more luck. Uh, very funny. <laughs> very funny. Right. So um, if I'm seeing correctly where this is going, you need us. The shipwrecking crew to pilot your ship to the astral plane, gather ether, and somehow manage to come back, which hasn't been done before. No, but great because that you... sounds dangerous. Good. Then, uh, what we need is to find a way to get this ship to the astral plane and collect ether. <sighs> Correction. There are two parts to either. I can give you one half that is required to return, but not the half that is required to go there. Which means that if ever pilot the ship does not gather either on the astral plane, they cannot return. That is the bad part. And why are you assuming that you will be piloting the ship? I have told you, I do not have a pilot, navigator. I have a pilot. Why are you pointing at Lance? You have a worse pilot than whatever I would drive. You're the best and, worst pilot I've ever seen. And the navigator you were looking to recruit might not be too far from here. Might yeah. have been involved in with her on Orello, so wait, Might navigators are the one right now. The wind okay. are not... so okay. technically in game terms, what Lance does is both piloting and navigating. Okay. Because he also makes a pilot check whenever he makes a jump. There's a navigation part to read the winds to calculate the jump. In the setting, obviously, not everyone is trained in both parts. Like some people know how to drive the vehicle, but not how to jump. Mm, okay. That's why, like, the dwarf didn't know how to drive, was very good at jumping. The uh, racers on uh, Polis, Polis were really good at driving, most likely terrible jumpers. Okay. Well, I mean, there are, you know, like similar things between them, but they're not the <laughs> same thing. And Lance is much more of a pilot than he is. A jumper. Sure, but I mean, in in the in the mechanics, technically equally as good yeah. and at both, yes. But uh, however you want to put that. So like, again, like I don't know, like if Lance would have that opinion of himself, but like with your current skill level, there are very few navigators, like specialized navigators, that would be better than you. Like, there are okay, kind of more feats the the they would have that you don't have that would help them, but. Yeah, but You're the heights really, are different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was confused because I thought they were always the same. In setting, technically, no. But mechanically. Right. You know, not everyone who knows programming can do the same things, you know? True, true. <laughs> <laughs> Very good compared. Oh. Uh, what you want to do? Right, so I want to drive that ship. Looks nice. So, uh, uh, please run down by again. If we could gather ether there, then we can come back, and you can give us only half the amount of ether. In theory, it has not been right. Only tested. And how do does one collect ether? Well, if you look at the ship over there, and actually I do have a picture of the ship dropped into game chat. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, ah, no, 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 no. Looks like. Oh, looks like that. Oh, that's fucking sweet. Holy shit. 
Uh, if you would see the uh, grating on the forward fin, it uh, works under normal conditions as a fuel scoop, but it is also equipped to collect, process, supposedly store either. Obviously, it is very hard to test. How have you tested it so far? Say again? How have you tested it so far? In simulations? It is That's... a modified version of the device I have used to collect much smaller much slower amounts of ether here. So let's say we have a navigator, pilot, and crew capable of going to the astral plane and managing this. How much ether could you give us up front? Or a friend of ours to accompany us. Well, I can give you half of the ether I have for one trip. If that is enough for you, good. If not, I am sorry, but I could so use the device. Ha half. You're saying half of what you have right now in exchange for us going there with the other half. Did I hear that correctly? in exchange for you getting me the person capable of bringing the ship to the astral plane yes i still do not understand why you insist that you will go i do not understand well you've worked arguments. with my mother yeah yes From it runs family. in the family i'd say so you father's a better pilot she was a better navigator, and I got mostly the best of both worlds. Well, and her some talent, extras. If I understand correctly, was based uniquely on her, um, her condition. Yes, I know. F, a condition? Mm. Not the same one. What was your mother's condition? Foresight? If you put one and one together, yes. Yep. How how much ether can can be collected and stored? In the ship? Mm-hmm. Uh, frankly, I would argue that it should hold more ether than you will be able to find. All right. But it will hold at least one ether. Yes. Yeah, one ether is back and forth, right? Uh, no, one ether is one way. One way. OK. Oh, like at least you're, you're like, muted, there, there's no, you know, like one ether, two ether, three ether. It's more he's like it requires so much ether to, in theory, jump the ship. That's the unit I'm using. How much do we need to get that loop back? Who knows? I mean, I mean I'm Who asking. Knows? I actually I'm... know. I have it here on my device. Exact amount that I have measured. And that is how much? Uh, and units of jumping. <laughs> he kind of like looks at it. Uh, how much is one either for you? I can just oh, j just show me the numbers. And how many uses the metric system? Drag yeah. the tablet towards him. I mean, it's like it's it, it's a new like thing that isn't being used enough for people to figure out how to agree how to marry it. I mean, come on, in real life, like like kilograms. Pounds, ounces, <laughs> people can't agree on Tones. this. Yeah. 
Stones, yeah. Uh, and is ether measured in uh, volume uh, or mass? Or <laughs> He looks at it and goes, Oh, uh, that is about 60, 66.5% of one ether. So with uh, and how much amount, is it? You... Technically, two. Yeah. You yeah. technically have two. Yes. So that's that's essentially for us just a fetch and drop job, and we got <laughs> everything that we need. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are easier fetch and drop jobs out there, but um, technically. You are correct, I think. I, I, think, I, mean, I think this is a part where like more intelligent mice here aren't thinking like, okay, we have enough either, but somebody's thinking Dalu takes 63% of either required jump. to jump a ship to a different plane. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not eco friendly. Is smaller than Fable. <laughs> Fable is about 50 meters long. This ship is about 40 meters long, if I remember correctly. And thinner and like, you don't see it on the picture, but basically like the bottom half of the ship ends under the fin and then it's on the other half. So it's like, like, like a shovel. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, so again, it's 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 a much smaller ship than Fable, uh, though it looks dense. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah. Uh, well, if you could uh, prove your abilities, if you agree, if you sign some papers, uh, then I think we could agree on this exchange of. Services for goods. I have a different question. Can you measure the output of a certain action in Ether if it's done somewhere close to the fuel scoop over there? What? <laughs> Through teleportation? Ah, we have devices for that, yes. How much unit of jump is one jump or teleportation? Do you have an idea? There is a lot of difference between uh, different. Like, yeah, like what Nova said about using a ninth level a circle oh, to nice. generate a fifth level spell or whatever then the residue the difference is what makes up the ether that means you don't take much at all because you I use exactly don't... what you need and we can test we could yes could we sure you ever done true teleportation before? Sure you have. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not coming. You will do it on your own in front of the device. One meter to the left, one meter to the right. Yes? No, I need one other person as well. Oh, uh, let me go sure. with you. Okay, let's go to that device. Um, yeah, you go to the device, uh, like, it's not a device, it's more like they have a separate chamber, uh, where there's, like, an area where you need to do a thing, and the wall is the device that is supposed to capture, or more like, well, yeah, kind of ma capture and calculate minuscule amounts of either in the air. That is one of the first drafts, very big, cannot put on the ship, but I could. I'll just I'll just jump back once and twice, jump back and forth, you know. Alone or with somebody? 
first alone. Yeah. You, you jump alone. Uh, you're like, and she's like sitting behind the screen. And uh, it is not quite zero, but there is not enough zeros on the screen to explain how little it is. Makes sense. Then I will jump with Bobby once to the side. Uh, you jump with Bobby, and it's like one divided by like 10,000. Percent. How many days is that? That's a lot of fucking days, let me tell you. So, to be fair, uh, people with your condition tend to be extremely efficient with their expenditure. Arcane teleportation tends to leak more. We have done some tests with Nova here. At better numbers, but... Yeah, now it goes. I mean, if I do it once every day at the ninth circle, it will take us about a year to get a unit. All right. You get slightly more if you stick it in, it in the planner gate. So basically, Dal, uh, not Dal, Alexander had to figure out a way to find astral planes, uh, not astral planes, uh, gates, uh, planner gates. Uh, which actually, funnily enough, is how he improved his device that measures either, locates it. No, there's no, there's a silver lining to everything. Uh, but yeah, I'm afraid the world just isn't a convenient place to live in for researchers. <laughs> is is ether what uh, what inflicts spell plague? I don't... I would be surprised if it is. Um, well, I mean, I guess in theory, if you make enough of it, just like use any magic, just... Either is not very reactive. No? Like the... Um, I guess the liquid magic would be the most reactive with the particular binding agent or catalyst. Yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, so, it looks how was... like we have a plan. You need to prepare for your trip. I am not coming, just think. That sounds fun, but I don't think I'll quite prepare to risk my life on a... Experimental jump to another plane. I'd rather do it the old-fashioned way with a spell. Um... Wait, could you? Could you just teleport this ship through through a spell? No, 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 no. I mean, uh... no, I don't. I... I think it doesn't work. Um... Is this yeah, 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 yeah. kind of kind of like in the chaos in the Warhammer, where you just like teleport through the chaos, whatever? I there is technically a plane shifting spell that is close to what you're describing, but let's put it that way. That spell. would cost me about half a million credits to use once and it gives me a portal about six meters in diameter to go through for a minute it's a great spell that's usually how great heroes travel planes when we're talking about, you know, commercial transportation, you need to make it cheaper. Yeah, this isn't a private jet. Uh, I could, however, take that either that Alexander has promised us and go try to fix Dalu while you finish your business here. 
or more like start your preparations. Indeed, that would be awesome. Oh, we were, to were we were talking to Elonu now. No, this is Nova. Out of character. No, Nova. This is Nova. Nova oh, sorry. And Alexandra. Okay. My Elonu mind did... cannot hold too many NPCs. Hey, at once. I, I, I know. I know. I also have to be right back to the toilet. Everyone's doing it. Maybe I'll. No, just kidding. Um, yes, uh, it would be very appreciated. That way, we could perhaps expedite things right. a bit more. Right. Um, all right. So again, for the purpose of convenience, uh, you talk, Hello. you walk. Uh, Alexander shows you his supply of ether, which is like very weird, like looking device like kind of like power device that maintains it in a certain state and then there's like basically like a glass tube which has like a tiny 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 orb like a p purple pink gas with like silver tendrils coming out of it and uh like once because uh, nova <laughs> uh like you have like this much time to travel with it before it stops being contained they go, they take it, she's gonna cast teleport, she's gonna go to the ship, she's gonna go into the med bay, she's gonna plug, well, she's gonna explain to Dal what she's gonna do first, and get his consent. She's hurrying though, because the device is quickly becoming less and less stable. She's basically getting like, in theory, this should give the missing materials for your body to refix itself. In theory. Do it. <laughs> like I would video. imagine that that um, that Winnell would want to oversee this procedure. Could she have taken him with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could take all of you with her if you with her if you want. Yeah, I think I think I would also go. I mean, Just technically, the only one who needs to stay behind is Lens, uh, because he needs to do some exams. <laughs> prove his, yeah, prove his abilities. No, no. Well, and this consent that she's looking for. Well, yes. Yes, yeah, she's well, not winning. Valu is probably very eager and. Um, is questioning like you know he's thinking existentially about how how long forever is because he's stuck in the spirit thing and he's going to be in limbo and all this crap so yeah of course he says he says yes <laughs> uh, uh, she puts the device and like uh we like helps to, like find like a port for such a thing um and as like either begins kind of like uh, adding itself to the liquid, uh, she kind of goes, Well, you know, in theory, this means that once this body expires naturally, your soul might just end up being stuck in Astral Plane forever. Because souls shouldn't deteriorate on Astral Plane. Because, yeah. And that's when you kind of like start kind of like losing your current like spirit side consciousness and um kind of like feel yourself dragged uh towards that orb which kind of like begins to like, <laughs> and like unravels and opens a little bit like um there was device of that kind somewhere but whatever you know like, like rubes could begins like uh doing things and uh <laughs> And you get dragged into the center of that uh, chamber as Tazra is basically like reeled into the orb. And uh, not you, but those who are observing, they can like, see like rays of light being kind of like streaking from this orb and go like <laughs> through this liquid as it kind of begins like arcane 3D printing a body. <laughs> Um, uh, which, like, as Winner's observing, he's gonna go like, that's mostly how a body is supposed to work. Not quite, but mostly how a body is supposed to work. 
<laughs> it has most of the parts, yes. Um, but uh, after about like half an hour of this, uh, of like the orb just basically like, growing itself with... It doesn't even feel like a flesh because there's no blood really, so it doesn't look as... Vascular is the word, as such things usually do. Uh, Looks like a cadaver. Yeah. Well, even... It looks more like a mannequin. Uh, and... Throughout the process, you kind of like see the... This, like, stringy, wormy shape of Dal kind of like phasing through an incomplete body. And then, at the end of it, the orb just kind of goes... Like, seems to go through the process of locking itself as, like, an arcane uh, circle arcane writing just kind of goes over the whole body, most likely, like, creating some sort of barrier or containment or whatever. And that's when you Dalu lose your consciousness for a moment. You no longer see the difference between Dalu soul and Dalu body. The body itself takes some kind of color. And well, Dal is not that pale, actually, no. And you, Dal, come to consciousness. You inhale. You inhale liquid. You panic. You figure out, oh, I can breathe this liquid. But you're still <laughs> in a container. <laughs> you're like, I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same body. Same looking body. Oh, the people on the outside. Um, it is the same. Well, I think like you've seen enough of naked Dalu to say like it's exactly the same body, but the face looks pretty much like Dalu is supposed to look. It's doesn't have many facial hair, like there's no beard and the hair are pretty short. Uh, but it's Dalu's face. His eight inches remain. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, can I open the tank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, like, the device that goes like creating Dalu. Like, body is created like 262%. Then. <laughs> 62% <laughs> are required to create Dalu <laughs> Junior. <laughs> anyway, uh, somebody had a question for me. Yeah, when uh, do we get like a thing like on a microwave when the procedure is done? No. I wave. I try to. Who's there? When it goes, no, 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 no! No? You open it, you open it correctly, but you forget to drain it first, so... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm not uh, cleaning that. Uh, I'm well, yeah, gonna Dalu, catch yeah. Dalu, give him a bear hug. He probably Kill stumbles him. out. Yeah. That's you, good, you, a good lot of Dalu, yep. you embrace him. There's like... Against your metal. <laughs> I, I don't feel it. <laughs> um, he probably just coughs and sort of deals with it for uh, the first minute. And then uh, he's standing proudly and then he then he goes Okay. Um I'm going to get some clothes and a burger. So I'll be in the kitchen. Uh, let me cook for you. You sit down and relax. I got this. Is Dalu in any pain? Um, not that he can. Like, he feels weak. And like he... Like slightly dizzy. And uh, Dalo might want to like go hit the showers first. 
and also like, have somebody watch him so he doesn't sleep and hit his head on the shower out of dizziness because now he was just like in this solution which is still kind of like, slightly sticky it's not water uh... sure we don't look up map oh goes... prepare the burger you know what you prepare the burgers i'm gonna go help dalu here he gives you a mop and a bucket you clean this up captain uh, am I? I'm not there. I stayed with Lance. Did you? Yeah. Why are you asking so he many needs... questions then? Just out of curiosity, but Lance needs a cheerleader, and I'm the best cheerleader around. It's in, it's in the name. Leader. Cheerleader. <laughs> Alright. Well, huh? in any case. In any case. You sort it out. You get all dressed washed and fed, not necessarily in that order. Uh, and I guess we're gonna go and take a proper break. I'm gonna go take a break. Let's keep it short, five minutes. I think I have more materials than three sessions after all. <laughs> oh my god.
we're back. All right, yeah, so we fixed Dal. Finally, Jamie, you can play now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you die again. Died. Use your consumable items. Stay in the back. Well, what's happening there? right now? I mean, Dal just got revived, so I don't know, you're hugging and kissing him and... No kisses. Making him some pizza, pizza party. No burgers. He was, uh, he was Adam okay. and Jenny. Burger party. Bobby's cooking. Can I just cook? taste some food, yeah? Make me oh, a work skill check with whatever uh, modifier you can... Excuse. Intelligence, because because. knowing the right ingredients, sure. uh, when the boiling point is, doing quick maths that are not oh. quick. <laughs> well, <laughs> the double net one? I don't want it to. Dalo, <laughs> it's gonna be burnt. It's the best burger you've eaten since you got revived, because it's the first burger you've eaten. <laughs> best That's burger you've last. eaten since you died. Uh. That's or so maybe even it. since you went to the jungle because there were no burgers there. And to be fair, you I don't think you actually you're... haven't had proper food for yeah. many months. Like your taste buds are just awakening and they haven't understood what good food is yet. So this is fine. Yeah, it's delicious. Well, thank you, Bobby. I have been craving to be, you know, been cra I've been craving to have cravings. And I hope is, I have killed that so. desire again because it does look tasty. <laughs> Correct. Well, I love the crunch. <laughs> it's got a crunch, and if you throw it in the wall, it probably has a thick thud. Excellent burger, yes. <laughs> well, I'm just glad that you're back. No, uh, it means a lot. Thank you. I, I was, I, I am quite worried about everything that's just happened, but it's nice to, um, rush back to getting, you know, some stimul stimulus. It's, it's, it makes me feel present. So, a burger. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to take a piss next. That'd be good. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, I slam his, uh, big ass weapons on the table. And say, uh, I kept shit. them oiled, just in case you want to shoot something. Thank you. Thank you. I'll clean the one you've got engraved too. Lovely, lovely. I'll get all my shit back on me. Okay. Meanwhile, I assume uh, back at the building, uh, Lance is proving to... Uh... Alexandro, that he is more than qualified to navigate this ship. So it sounds like an IDM. Um, what yes. do I do? Make me pilot skill check, as he's basically giving you, like, oh god, your ship is traveling from point A to point B. In front of you is half a page formula of a labyrinth wind. This is a. This would be a nice time to roll four ones, like, wouldn't it? Uh, create a formula that would. Describe the trajectory your ship needs to take through this labyrinth in order to come out within a certain period of time. Like, this is actually a really complicated task. Oh, God, look at the rule. <sighs> okay. That's painful. Okay. It's a sad rule. It's okay. a sad rule. Um, <sighs> you solve I'm for sure it. imagining it like this. You solve it correctly. You just take your time with it. And you argue with Alexandro a lot because you're like, here's the answer. And he's like, but how did you get it? You're like, I mean, this is the answer. He's like, yeah, it is correct, but how did you get it? And you're like, I mean, you do this and then this. And he's like, yeah, but what do you do between those things? And you're like, you're supposed to do something there? <laughs> I just know how that works. What? <laughs> Okay. I kind of go like, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I see. 
I see. Give, give, just give me a second one, you know? Uh, if you yes, want all yes. of the step-by-step -step stuff, uh, maybe I, I second exercise. I think yeah? I understand the way you approach these problems. Uh, come with me, come with me. Get you to another room, gets you basically into a flight simulator chair. Or like he gets you into the chair and you're like, and he like turns it on. It's like uses major image, like create a uh, cabin of a ship around you. Those. I will just put in a, well, uh, let's go with this difficulty. And like the image changes immediately and like alarms start going off, like showing like problem, problem, problem. You need to like adjust your course, you need to do a thing. Make me another pilot skill check. Oh my god, the dice are not willing. <laughs> What? Four and three, that's a that's that's average, dude. That's seven. That is not average for four dice, let me tell you. That is not <laughs> average for double four ones dice. There. We rolled, uh, yeah. The, the dice are weak, but the feet is this, this is so, so, like, a seven is average if you just roll 2d6. Right. Not if you roll 4d6 and keep two. Yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> Uh. Well, so the simulator looks like Discord. Uh, <laughs> so uh, again, you solve it. And, like, he didn't put a very hard task to you. He's just not incredibly impressed. He goes, Well, I will trust that you are a very, very good pilot. Just, uh, we need a slightly different set of skills for the, you know? Problem. Because, well, I will have to explain it to all of you. You see, in order to calibrate the drive, you need to make a series of jump. Now, if you are very, very, very good, and I mean like, top three in the sector, good. Uh, perhaps you could do it on the first try. Just go to astral plane. But most likely you will go to another plane first. And then you will hopefully survive whatever happens there. And have enough time for your drive to recharge. So you can jump again. The second jump will be easier because the ship now knows where not to go. And so in theory, if you survive long enough, even a monkey can jump to astral plane. I am thinking that is the problem. Most of the pilots just go to too many planes before they get to the astral plane. Hmm. I am I am willing to experiment with the pilot. Because apparently my ships are not sufficient, I admit. I am good. But I am I am only top ten. What's that a plus two? <laughs> Oh, that's still a plus four, most likely. Uh, okay. In this area. So, you see, these are good results. These are very good results for a pilot who is flying a merchant ship. You will be one of the best pilots flying a merchant ship. I need you to shift. Yes? Yeah. Honestly, I'm just, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm a little okay. off. Feels a little artificial, even with your simulation. It just doesn't feel like the real deal. It doesn't feel like there's a 120 kilometer snowstorm going out on outside your window and you have to pilot oh, your I, ship to safety. It just doesn't feel real enough to me. I can be a, a testament to this. He does perform better under a pressuring circumstance. Well, I could inject you with deadly poison and put an antidote behind solving a problem, yes. It would not... probably work better. <laughs> he would. <laughs> I was joking. I was joking. Oh, I'd be I willing. Was... Will you? <laughs> it's like, thank you, wait, what? Might as well. Just have Winnell close by, and it'll be fine. 
Mm. I am not putting you into my ship to prove a point. I think with uh, Lance's uh, uh, performance, plus uh, he won't be going along. He will be going with the crew, I guess, right? Um, survivability goes up by a lot. Yes, the crew is important to solve whatever problems the ship encounters after the jump. The best circumstances is if the ship does not encounter problems, of which course. is 90% dependent on the navigator. I mean, after you jump, 90% depends on the pilot to survive until you jump again. That's... All right, all right. Va we will run one last experiment. You say this is not real enough? Very well. We will change this a little bit. Hey! What? Why can't we carry this chair to the force testing facility? Yeah! <clears throat> yes. Yes, we can carry it! To the force testing facility. So, I will carry it. I picked it up. It's still heavy. All right, get to the facility. And <laughs> start swapping there. Um, I guess it's another chamber. Kind of looks similar to the one um, you've jumped in to test for either, uh, but instead of that giant wall with like a mesh on it, more like a wall with a tube in it. And uh, I kind of go to the chair just right on that red egg. But like, are you sure? Yes. All right. Put the chair. Uh, I kind of go, all right. Try again. It's not happening I'm to speaking. them. Wait, I wait, didn't wait, wait. tell you to roll. I told I told you no, to wait. sit in it. No, I did Yeah, no. I thought I see told me to roll. Oh. It's another ten. The sadness does not end I here. Wanted to hell. <coughs> Make me an evasion saying throw. A piano falls on your hand. Right. Basically, he pulls, put you in front of an aer aerodynamic tube, and you had a task about plotting a route amongst a bunch of moving uh, chunks of rocks. At the same time, the tube was throwing rocks at you, which would actually hurt you. And you weighed rocks with your body. Uh, your imaginary ship, however, does not make it to the end. I don't know. Oh, so, Mr. Uh, Miles, yes? Uh, you were talking that you mm -hmm. are aware of a navigator close, yes? Was also me talking, by the way, not him. Right. But yes, we know where the one you wanted to contact is. Though we are not certainly about her availability. I... These the results I have seen. The probability of you reaching the astral plane in one piece is not one I will bet on. 40? 40%? I was thinking more like 15? On the first try? No. At all. At all. It oh. will take about 4, 5, maybe 6 jumps with these results to calibrate. 
uh, surviving six jumps through plane of fire, plane of water. I would not bet on you being better at avoiding a volcano than you are at plotting. That is how I have lost three ships, I think. They jumped, they lost their signal. I did not make it. That is why I have said that your mother was one of the best specialists. Uh, out of character, do I... Uh, does Miles think that he needs to try and convince uh, Alexandru to let them go on this mission for... I don't know. Uh, like, does it have to be them, or can we really just, like, hey, that's the dwarf navigator we kidnapped, like, a few months back? Well, I mean, in theory, at this point, uh, the reason you want to go there is A. Uh, well, Maybe I don't know body... if anybody is thinking about it, but uh, Lance's mother did disappear on the astral plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but that was 10 years ago, and that's... Sure. Uh... That's why I'm, I don't know if anybody is thinking about trying to find her. Yeah, that's... Uh, aside from that, thought. the only reason is same reasons you helped Alonu, same reason you helped uh, Chrono. Ah, achieving their Most fucking goal. Most likely, Alexandra here is subconsciously working for something. And yeah, most likely, right. you're like, wait, this is all connected to Dal. We need it. Either to fix Dal. Alexandru is looking for either. Like, this is too convenient to be a coincidence. Mm -hmm. This is all connected. Whether the ship is what matters or the either that matters, most likely one of these things will be a key to getting to PX. Oh, like into the PX. I mean. Yeah. That's the second reason. Aside from that, you could in theory just teleport away. Hey, we fixed Dal. Fuck you. Solve your no, problem. Yeah but, yeah, but this is part of Dal's yeah. quest. All right, let's take a break from you guys. Go back to the ship where Dal has sufficiently recovered to at least like sit upright. Uh, we will run all the tests. Like again, Dal is kind of weak. Uh, his body didn't have any um, like food in it basically. So you're like you know low blood sugar, low pressure. So basically, I can get to eat and get in the long run. Uh, yeah, you basically come back at one hit point and full system strain. So, yeah, like Winnell, even Winnell can't really help you right now. You need like a week of rest, preferably. Uh, and as a hand, you're technically not in any hurry. So you could take a couple of weeks of downtime for Lance to maybe train up, get used to this stuff, prove himself, or maybe figure out something else. Uh, but I think it might be also a good idea for you guys to like eventually get together somewhere and uh, exchange what has happened, what you found out, uh, formality plan. Huh? Yep. Group up together. I think um, I'd probably at some point um, just after chilling with Bobby ask uh, Ilanu if he has had any, if he's with me, if he's on the ship, uh, still, is he on the ship? Uh, yeah, he will be on the ship. Is yeah. Uh, so I'd go to him and just say, has there been any, uh, you know, change in how I feel? Uh, I don't, yeah, how you feel in regards to going to PX? It's strange. It's. I have it nagging in my head, you know, like, it's anxiety, I must do this, mm -hmm. but I also think that like, helping, not even you, helping Alexandra is almost as important, and it's distracting me for now. I do think, yeah. though, if you go, I, I assume you all know what's going on, right? But if you go on the trip, I don't think I'll be coming with you. I feel like it's dangerous. I, I can't afford to risk myself like that anymore. 
And most likely if I'm here alone, I'll just... Just... I don't know. Find a ship and go? But what do you mean go... Like, go find a ship and go in? Go, uh, like, follow us? What do you mean? No, go to that place where the other guy went. Chrono. Right. It's just... I don't know how to explain it. It's... Like, you know, your eyes are closed and you're in your home and you know where something is. You just reach out your hand and you'll find it. It's kind of like that, but on a planner scale. Like, I need to get there. But where did where did Krona go? Where do you think Krona went? I mean, didn't you tell me you got a call yeah. from your friend that he went to? Well, as far as I know, he went with uh, Grant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that place. We, we, do you know... Okay, that's not what does that have to do with the PX? I don't know. I just. I, I, this chamber needs to go there. I see, like, polishing <laughs> the second chamber. It needs to get there. I don't know why. I mean, apparently it had nothing to do with fixing you. I, I, I don't think anything, oh, what did you... anything to do with you. Well, what, well, then, what, you just suddenly feel that you're. After helping Alexandra here and this whole stuff with the with PX, you haven't even gone there or traveled, and but you think you're done. You don't. You don't need to do that. You don't get that nagging feeling anymore. No, no, no. That's what I'm thinking. I do have it. Alexandra okay. is distracting me. But if you right. leave, if I'm not sure, I can just like sit with him and wait. And I've. I'm frankly, I'm running out of, me, of my medication after a month of travel, and I I guess I could go into this town and try and find something. I'm pretty sure I could cook something up, but I've had to up my dose to keep myself on task. I, I don't know, man. I just, I need to see what's there. Okay. I still would like you to uh, yeah to go into PX with us, and then you can go to where Kronu went. I you know the whole point is to just follow what you were doing in your head, and then another thing I want to ask you is how this Alexander has been because now that we've met another person who's related, that's a big deal, and if he's felt it all the same. I haven't. I've heard about him, seen him. But, I mean, is he the same as you? I mean, the same he feelings? didn't say anything about wanting to go there. I mean, so what, what he said, he's been doing all this for like 10 years? Yeah. I think my memories are less than 10 years, if we think like about real memories. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe... I mean, he's... What, he showed me the papers? He's the oldest? Maybe he was slightly differently? I don't know. Maybe his task is different. Maybe we're given different levels of patience. I think your chrono guy just went off the rails immediately. Maybe, I don't know, maybe once you come back with whatever Alexander wants, he's gonna go off the rails. Right. Well, anyhow, um, yeah, that's interesting. And following him is now an next priority for me. But the whole point of this is to follow your gut and where you're trying to go and what's happening to you. But, and we, you know, we're with you doing that. It's important. And we're escorting you there. Um, but let's not just swap and change. No, let's not doubt. And let's not get distracted. We can just do this and then go to where Corona went. And then there a fourth guy? Um, look, I mean, the the list of people <clears throat> that I showed you was um, I, I'm I, I'm on a search for to answer these questions. 
I mean, I, I what's more important is that is what's going on here with you. We can I I can possibly go and talk to these other people, and Alexandru obviously now he's here more. This is the biggest leap, that biggest um as far as as I've gotten. So this is more important. I'm gonna find out what's going on with you and where you're actually trying to go, whatever the fuck that means. I mean, I think we know is. where I want to go. We don't know why. Well, you want to, you're getting distracted. And you want to go to where Cronu went, and okay. I mean, no, yeah. that's where I want to go. Me and Cronu, we want to go to the same place. I mean, he yeah. went there already. Okay. Yes. Px. Then yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just checking. It's more. I, I'm not. I'm not getting the full image, like. I have this you know, medical equipment. Uh, Alexandru has a what? Ship? Fuel for this chamber? And the Krona guy found a broken spirit? Broken Slavic greater spirit? Like, what's 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 the pattern? <clears throat> Is this conversation happening next to me, or am I not in the room? It's okay if I'm not. not. Uh, I think Ilona was being fairly loud, it, but it really depended where Ilona was. If Ilona was with in the, near, in the same room, then sure, he, that doesn't mind. But he would have walked to Ilona, so I mean, you might as well just be there. Fuck it. It's just, you might as well. Okay. We have a... Sh uh, so, we have three components thus far, right? We have a broken spirit. We have a ship. We have medical equipment. I think so. What if the broken spirit... Something like Dalu, an actual soul that tries to get a body back. What if the whole plan is to maybe get to the astral plane because maybe what either to get enough ether to bring that to create a body for that spirit? Or the spirit is somehow anchored on the astral plane, and that's why the, maybe that ship is designed to get to the astral plane, so you can retrieve whatever. Um, Bobby, make me an intelligence. Like, well, let's go with a no skill check. No skill like, check. All these big um, schemes <sighs> that go on, they're scary. And it's good to think about. It seems to be happening. Fits the narrative that there's these weird implanted schemes. Um, I mean, it doesn't make sense though. But the, these memories I have of another me, that there's some other me out there that I want to speak to. I've been looking for. Well, then what does it? Have, what does that have to do with anything? What that what, means that it, there's another person, not a spirit, that's been looking for. You know. No. no what? What? What if? Hmm. Um, does it's the role tell me here. any anything before no. it starts? Okay. Like you don't you don't recollect any additional information. Yeah. What if your souls are somewhat tied together to that original you, and whatever is driving you is part of that soul's desire to be formed back? Maybe he maybe the real you or whatever the origin of you is trapped on the astral plane. And somehow managed to shed parts of him into this uh, plane to create a plan to get him back. That's I I that's so grand. I mean, but first of all, my first memories were I was floating in the astral plane, and then I came here by my choice. I I, I was at some weird ruin, 
and I managed to get to the material plane and so on, so on, and I got memories and so on, so on. So I wasn't just here. I wasn't in. I mean, I wasn't in the material first or the plane of air. I have an idea. You and said this guy. He, he was looking. From what I can go by these memories, this other me was trying to make a body. Um. To travel, you know, be in the astral plane. That means he wouldn't be in the astral plane. I mean, what does a guy have to do with all of this? That that story. That's basically what I'm saying. Maybe that's just someone who wanted to explore and something went wrong. I mean. Folks from the material plane came here, so it's only natural for me to consider that they also wanted to tra traverse to other planes, especially if there are portals here that lead mm -hmm. to that plane. Makes sense to me. Um, you said that you saw some sort of ruin on the astral plane when you came about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much knowledge is there here in Mensheim on the astral plane? Is is has anyone ever actually been to the astral plane and explored it and brought back some information, or is it being yes, mythical? But this is basically mostly achievable by like high level wizards who do so through short spell assisted incursions, and mostly is used for again traversal further like you know oh, so you know that's uh make me another no skill check mm. a day of low roads man uh, i don't know mine is not bad uh like you know that there are actually like some you've heard stories that some people find astral plane as their home You've heard stories that, like, alien, you know, like in terms of humanity, creatures sometimes travel astral plane from who knows where and sometimes end in our world. So it's not really a place you go because it has something. It's more like astral plane is not the destination usually. Astral plane is a journey. <laughs> mm. So out of out of character, it's 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 like uh, it's like worm wormhole uh, county where you where you just it's traverse more from like like a another. giant uh, I don't know room with with a bunch of doors. That leads to very interesting places. All I can know in in, in slightly metagaming terms, its astral plane is like, all right, guys, we need to go to the nine hells to save the soul of our friend and save the world. Anyway, we travel through the astral plane and we get there, and adventure begins. Okay, I I don't I don't know. So. Um... We could we could try to look up the ruins that you saw in whatever documentation is available. We could um, ask uh, Lady Vermilion if uh, she has access to such knowledge, because I don't think that you that we have shared that specific part of your experience. Uh, we could you try to use the resources to maybe find more information on this, and that would hopefully be another clue uh, to what awaits us what, uh, at the end of whatever road this leads to. Or we could just say fuck it and go to uh, PX something something and just see what happens, which I'm also completely fine with. Hello, that pipes up. I mean, I mean, are we I think... sure that there are only four of us? I only got a certain amount of information from Grant. I okay. was my mean my immediate reaction was that that academy person could only get so much, so that there was, you know, the thought was in my head that okay, then what is the force guy? My information is not enough. What is he going? Someone else. Who knows Who? that? Basaru. I mean, I think the, I'm not there. the more pieces we have here, the 
clearer we might see the puzzle. Well, look, I, I think that delving into what I saw, it's all important. Uh, the main thing was trying to figure out what the hell is going on with each one of us and this bigger um, thing that was noticed with like these implanted memories and I've had similar then you know and a branch of that to figure that out was to f follow your desire the places you wanted to go that were important px one of them we should just i think with more priority to stick with what you want to do the people we have here what they want to do before uh okay fine looking Let's into like the, the ruins and go so there. on no, I'm just, okay, yes, we're going, we'll figure it out. I'm just saying that, yeah, talking about these ruins and so on, we'll do that after. I mean, they have to sort, sort of information that at least we know where to go Um, with this PX place. Has anyone asked Grant, who has apparently gotten information from there by the Ice Stone? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Has anyone used the eye stone to get information from Grant, who apparently is with the Academy and got the information from there? Uh, we we have contacted him to uh, to find out where he is, and he's somewhere uh, around PX. Okay. I mean, we could. Oh, well, in that case, we could meet up with him, or just ask yeah. him. How is there like? How do you even use? To, how do you enter? How do you get to these places? I th I think I think he meant. Correct me, please, if I'm if I'm wrong, Dan. Um, but I think he mentioned that they were having problems getting to lo that location. Yeah, he's basically so. telling you that even with this supposedly like good enough navigator that Alexandro considered hiring her, after all these months since we've kidnapped her on the Rella, like. Half a year ago, I think. Uh, you sti they still have not found a way through the labyrinths into whatever's in the middle of the PX. Like because PX doesn't have any islands, they're basically chilling on a ship, orbiting around those labyrinth winds, trying to find a way in, and not finding one. And at some point, apparently, Krona came in on a different ship, and Grant captured him. And he's chilling with them. Oh, maybe not chilling oh. and then sitting in a room in a straitjacket. Most likely. <laughs> Do people that fly in just get destroyed? Well, well, one of the options. Okay, so we don't know. I mean, sometimes people very conveniently find a shorter path by going where they're not supposed to go, but it's very rarely happens. <laughs> Usually, yeah, like, if you go on the Labyrinth Wind in the wrong direction, you just get shredded. If you don't get shredded, you must, like, get thrown you, you, who knows where. Like, the worst case is you get thrown in the calm place, but you're still in the Labyrinth. And you're stuck. It's, it's okay, like, can I... it's not just a Labyrinth, it's like, it's a Labyrinth Storm. Or stone lever. Can I uh, use the eye stone and say to Grant, um, I'll just in like short segments because I only have 25 words, so I'll just say hello, Fable, and then I'll say this is where we are. So I just say that. Then I say, Do you want to meet up? Or I'll say, Can we meet up? And then I'll say, um, also, how enter, you know, how did you enter, sorry, how did you enter the winds, assuming he did. So I'll just send that, so hello, you know, this is where we are, can we meet up, also how did you enter the winds, so on. And then I suppose we're just waiting for Miles and Lance. Yeah.
sure you do get a response from Rand. How can it go? Still at its destination. Come in. Have you found more dogs? I think they are the key. That's about what he's. Okay. What was what did he say at the start? Did he say he will meet up? What did he say? No, he didn't say he will meet up. He said he what? can't. They can't get in. Uh, they're still stuck at PX. And he thinks. He thinks that uh, they need more of these clones. Okay, so he yeah, didn't right. say exactly where he is or that he'd meet up. He is at PX. Yeah, he didn't say he's, he's gonna meet up. Exactly. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah. Well, I can't contact him again till tomorrow. Um. I suppose we're just brainstorming in the ship and waiting for Miles and Lance to come back. So. Right, uh, Miles Lance, any plans for you two? Perhaps, like uh, um, Lance said, he is a bit on his off day. Um, it has been. Well, we've been traveling and only got here. Perhaps if uh, if we rest a bit and try again. Tomorrow we can prove you wrong, but also, um, is there any sort of, like, this is very all advanced with the simulations and and the devices you have here. Can can perhaps one practice here, in honing their skills? Well, that is the point of the device. Yes, to test, read out, so to speak. And well, I suppose for somebody with the skills of lens, training would be worthwhile. It will right, so also be time How how long were we speaking of? You are asking me how long it take your rough, roommate. Rough. To get good? Rough estimate? I mean, you've had probably pilots and navigators under these uh, training, and you've well, seen how... I would say it will require a major quest to level up to level 9 and upgrade his skill level to perhaps All increase right. his chances. And I did not say this. It is meta-knowledge. Level nine is another focus, or is it? Uh, uh, you level can 10? upgrade your skills to le to level four at level nine. Okay, okay. You're currently level eight, and you just recently level up. Yeah. Right. Well, what do you think, Lance? I don't know. Honestly, I just feel off today. That's all. Well, then again, nothing speaks against having an off day when you're supposed to travel, so bad argument, isn't it? I'm trying to find an excuse. Be fair, you have just revived your friend. Have just learned some things about your mother. And you have at the very least six more days before you need to get employed. Sure. Um, do you have a uh, mobile device that we can contact you instead of going back and forth all the time? 
No. But Kalad has. All right. Um, let's exchange information, uh, phone numbers. All right. Fine. Right then, so I think maybe we should head back to the ship for today and uh, see, discuss with the others perhaps, what, uh, what should we do? Yes, go, get to the sky ship. To the fable. <laughs> well, thank you very much, hmm. uh, Alexandru and, and Club, for your time. Um, yes. Hoping to see you soon. I have to admit, it has been a long day. Long enough that I have not even processed the part where you have brought two doppelgangers of me. Perhaps we it... all have some things to say. Indeed. Go. Oh. Good day. Press and we teleport back to the ship. Uh, if Lance wants uh, to, sure. Well, then again, if he like... doesn't, we'll take the train. <laughs> yeah, because it will take like two jumps to get there. Who? It's oh, 200 yeah, kilometers. Like, yeah. 200 kilometers? Oh, well, oh what? it's within 100 kilometers. Oh, okay. That's because you said the train was 200 kilometers. It took an hour. No, 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 no. I did not say the train was 200 kilometers. I said it took yeah. an hour by train, but I never said the speed of the train because I don't okay, want okay, to okay, give okay. a number because I don't know how big the island is, okay? I right, built right. it, but I don't know how big it is. Okay. It's as big as the plot requires. Yeah, so we, we go back to the ship. Okay. Um, unless you want to talk about something that just skip to tomorrow. Uh, we'll fill them in on what we've done there, uh, and the simulations and the tests, and uh, and also, Dalu. Hi, <laughs> it's good to see you back. Hi. How do you feel? Good to see you too. Uh, I feel different, new, but the same body. And generally speaking, it's good though. And Bobby may be a good burger. So I started feeling myself back into, you know, a good. Start, start feeling alive, which is good. Wouldn't want to feel dead. So, do you retain your your memories from when you were in spirit form? I yeah I do. I I have a good gist of what happened. It's a, it's a bit weird sense a bit you know the senses were different but yeah i have i know them um how, how do you feel about the whole you know dying coming back situation it's really hard to um describe it all to be honest but uh the biggest worry or thought that i had was just overhearing you talk about what could happen to my soul and now that's all that's on my mind. Um, even with all this, prog you know, progression and being outside this place, being with um, another person that's like me, that looks like me. Yeah, I just that, that that freaked me out. And uh, you know, after experiencing. Uh... The threats of being part of uh, of the crew and all and all, are you still? Do you still want to be with the crew? I, I, I'd very much would like it if you would stay with us. But I would understand after going through such an ordeal if you would perhaps would think otherwise. Uh, no, I I want to find. I still have yet to find everything for, you know, why I am the way I am. 
especially when I've gotten so many answers up to this point. So I, I, I'm not going to stop, and I don't see why I would travel with anybody else. So no, I'm not going. Uh, well, I hope I'm not going out of the crew. I hope you you've you've seen how much we've missed you and how long of distances we're willing to go in order to help you out. And I think Miles will bring like the most expensive bottle he has on the ship. And start pouring it into uh, glasses. And drinks them all. Buys and, them all. <laughs> yes. I think this is an occasion in which we should drink to celebrate. And not drink to forget. Yes. I take the dresser, but I don't drink. Again, all takes, he takes your cup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but <laughs> he'll pour you water. Yeah, Juice? I got I don't know. <laughs> all, all sorts of warning uh, lights if I if I were to take that into my hand. Bobby, alcoholic drinks in small amounts can actually benefit your. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's to you, Dalu, for hopefully not dying in the next uh, four hundred years. Thank you. I'll I'll definitely tr take some of that. Um, yeah. What is the most expensive one he has? Who creates the best wine? <laughs> Elves. Uh, most likely. Yeah. Helios Red. <laughs> I mean, technically, um, technically, like the best wine is created by part of Winnow's Order, the ones that are dedicated like love and beauty, because mm -hmm. a Kalkiriki is very like good, have very good grapes. And this all like is very specific about this, and this wine is called uh, just the excess. That's the brand. All right. Let's say while you are thinking, can don't know what to do. Uh, you finally turn your TV on after like two months of being in the jungle and flying because you technically missed two months of news and I'm going to give you a very quick update but many of the news made it onto the news um, long story short so in December uh, there is currently like some internal movement in the Soul Union like nobody saying anything and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true but individual soul union islands um losing valuable assets soul union soul union, islands yes. son of islands to oh, whom okay. that's a good question that's a question because there's no official like it's not like one sun is attacking another sun or vampires came it's like there was uh, let's say some uh important public speaker who just one day disappeared uh, is it reminiscent to what we experienced back on volos Make me a skill check. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. I'll let you make either connect charisma or lead intelligence. Um. 
lead is plus three plus one. That's four. It connects to minus one plus. Oh yeah, I'll go for it with lead intelligence. Ooh, sixteen. Okay. Nice you dice. Have absolutely no tangible proof, but you start connecting the dots. There was a storm that passed over Arca. It opened a new tr a new route. A new route might mean that there is another cluster of islands in this system that has not been opened. There has always been a very tense relationship between the three factions. The fact that your faction, the Red Order, is allowed to do what they're doing right now, which is getting their grabby hands on Arella, means nobody is stopping them. Means they're busy. Mm -hmm. Most likely, Horizon and Sol are doing something in the background. Yes. And then you're like, and you're pretty sure no one knows more than you do. Because she looks nice, she sounds nice, she's very helpful, she's still Grant's boss. Yeah. It's okay. Like all the stories about like sorcerer assassins, I mean, they're rumors. We've seen right? some. Right? <laughs> It's hard to or... imagine Nova like telling somebody, yeah, go kill a guy. Then you're like, well, I mean, she's also like a hundred something years old. Looks can be deceiving. That's your theory. A politics theory! <laughs> anyway, that's one thing. Uh, second thing is uh, Akka, who basically like, like Belgium, they're like, we're completely neutral of Switzerland. Like, we don't do anything. They are obtaining certain assets of a defensive nature. Because, again, somebody will have to go through them to exploit that new route. What, what was the new route from Akka to... No, uh, wait, from... from Akka to the west. To the west here, okay. I'm not sure if... Yeah, you can't see where it goes because you don't know it, nobody knows it. But, yeah, in that direction. Alright. No news in December on Baranakoya. Still quiet, Aurel is on their own. And again... A lull, a cis, not cis fight, but more like a lull in fighting on Arella. Uh, armed forces exhausted. Arella government is offering a lot of money for people to surrender locations of rebel bases and uh, who works with them. Uh, that's December, January that you spent traveling. Um, the rebels on Arella are getting support in high uh, positions. Yeah, in high positions. Um, a couple months ago, a real government has brought in uh, tanks into the city, and there is currently heavy push to get them out of the city. Like. Actually, half of them was forced to be moved. Uh, more disappearances of people connected to businesses and transportation in Seoul Union. Very quiet, very accidental. Aka has equipped a small but capable defensive fleet. Defensive what? 
complete. Okay. This is the first for them. Like, they have their own defenses, like nobody can take them on. But something outside of the... Not even an island, but a floating city. This is new. Um, you get first interesting news from Okoye. He's back on Arella. With a giant uh, relief fleet. Like he came back with more transport ships, more hospitals, more uh, you know, like mental health care, religious advice, you know, like whatever. Uh, they again like took position outside of or rather like uh, airspace. Like we're here, we're not going in because that would be wrong. But we're here, we're here to help anybody escaping from Aurela. We're gonna gi we're gonna give you food. We're gonna give you medical care. We will uh, ferry people to like the way station. We're here to help. Oh, how nice! Yeah, very nice. Uh, Aurela's policy of uh, buying people off has worked to a point. Uh, they didn't destroy any of the rebels. But uh, there was a large uh, like government propaganda, not government propaganda, like government sponsored newspaper made like a slaving articles about very specific individuals in the government who coincidentally have pushed for the removal of the tanks, uh, revealing their ties to the rebels and trying to discredit them. Doesn't mean. Like, the people of Varela have bought it, but at least it seems that the government knows who they need to remove. Uh, and two of those people have been arrested. On absolutely very real charges, yes. <laughs> uh, that's news for January. I'm not gonna give you news for February yet because technically you're a couple days away from them and let's save them for next week. <laughs> Sounds um, kind of like real world news, which is bleak. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I'm not happy with the things that are happening in the background because they make me very sad. And I didn't intend to do that. And I didn't lead no, but... them in that direction. It happened. No, it, it makes it feel real. It makes it feel too real. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, you get your rest. Um, next day comes, which is gonna be what the 13th. one system strain off and plus eight hit points for you, Dalu. One system strain and have a mod and eight hit points. Oh, eight, yes, is it eight for him? He's double oh, eight, right? Eight. Yeah, he's double yeah. Eight. is it nine hit points? Yeah. Hey. Yay. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, Winnell is oh, gonna Winnell say, probably like, could. he's gonna go, like, Can, he is... 40, uh, 66, right? 66. Yeah, but I think... But he's strained, Max. He's, he's, it, that, he's doesn't max the chamber one. do something? For, for like, more healing? Or strain? I don't know. Not for strain. Definitely more healing. I don't remember if that healing gives strain. I don't think it does. I mean, if Dal, if you want to so... spend night in the chamber, I think you could... Let's see, let's uh, look at the chamber. 24 hours, roll one hit die. I mean, it's also plugged in, so... I mean, I'll do it. But hit die, I don't <laughs> have hit die. Do it. I think the plugged in part is just the more people, technically, right? On a power mode. But what's, what's a hit die? What, like a D6? A... Ah, yeah, you need less time to do it and they can recover more. Yeah, you basically roll your 1d6 and that's extra hit points you recover if you sleep in the chamber. Yeah, so one has a 5 hit point. I thought Will could just give him another, like, 66 or something. With a third level spell I mean, spell. it's for Dalu to ask, like, Will will give it, yeah, but I know. it's more like, do you want hit points or do you want stress? Because like if he, uh, if he kills you now, yeah, you're full stress enough, again, and he heal. cannot heal you in combat. Yeah. 
Yeah, fair enough. I mean, just, what just combat are we gonna meet here? I don't know. In that case, if you're not making a combat, why heal? <laughs> I'll just heal slowly, get rid of the strain, it's fine. Yeah, so do you go back to the laboratory and try to do something? I think we need to discuss a bit. I'll discuss. <laughs> I have a really bad feeling that I made a big mistake. Anyway, continue. So we... In order... Okay. Our interest in going on to this mission is... Keeping in motion Dalu's quest. Right? Because fulfilling this mission for Alexandru will fulfill his calling and make him want to go to PX565, just like all the rest. I, I think that's the secondary reason in this case, to be quite frank. We have a debt to pay. We have a debt to pay, and I am going to be paying it. Oh, of course. We have him to thank now, that Dalu is back right now, so it's not even a question for me. The question is more what does he want. If he doesn't want me doing it, then we will need to uh, pick up the navigator. It doesn't seem well, like... Grant is going anywhere with her, and she might be of use, and could tag along if she wants to. Out and, of, uh, out of character together, question, yeah. uh, doesn't Grant need her in order to stay where he is? Uh, no. Okay. No, he's basically like in, in safe orbit, far away from the winds. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, also, for reference, uh, Pathfinder requires a minimum crew of two people and can have a maximum crew of six. Six people? Yeah, at least the, the current version of Pathfinder. Uh, Lance, one one. with this mapping thing, is that like something that I can assist you on without increasing your chances of success? If I were to accompany you or assist you? I mean, you are an incredibly intelligent fellow. You might be able to, to be frank, but uh, it wouldn't be easy. I mean, out of character, you have pilot zero, but a plus three, right? From your yeah. intelligence. Yeah, you basically... You have same modifier, drive. Uh, you have same modifier, but you're all 2d6, you're all 4d6 drop. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're gonna know. be a backseat driver. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, him helping in that sense is obviously possible. It is possible. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, the odds are a lot worse. Yeah, that, that, that's but technically, it's possible. Me trying to help help you. Read I mean, the worst map case, he fails to read that. Yeah, like, he, and then he doesn't give you a plus one, basically, right? He, he, yeah, I know. I know. Most likely, run try to run the mass in the background. The question is, does he run it fast enough to help you? <laughs> because yeah. if he calculates the maneuver after you've already got two hits, that's pointless. Yeah, you could try. I mean, technically, we uh, Mars jumping behind you and telling you how good and confident, wonderful you are can happen. No, I wasn't able. I wasn't able to do that before. It just, you know, you kind of got used to it, so it doesn't always work. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three. Quick math. <laughs> <laughs> um, just letting you know, um, I'll have to go in like five minutes, unfortunately. But uh, uh, so. Like, I was just thinking, I don't know if you thought about this, what if you just, well, what if we have a drone? I mean, we have the money. I don't know if we can even get one. What if we just, can we just throw something in to the winds and just see what happens and, like, get surveillance? Has anyone done this? For, but, what, what do you, what, what winds? Do you mean PX? The, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the work? PX. Uh, I'm fairly certain with the resources that Grant has at his disposal, this is not. Done, eh? I mean, sure. I, I would assume that if it was an option, he would have done it. Because I, mean, I, I, I got the I got the many information monies. from Dan's description that there's you know there's a chance, and that and that either it's a chance or it's actually up to some level of skill now. Out of the game, that's to the chance, but uh, you know let's what I mean. put it that way. Um, 
throwing, not even drones, but just like tensors, probes into the winds is one of the basic ways of trying to like find the path through them. Okay, right. So it's been done already. Most likely. Yeah. The navigator probably did it in that case. Yeah. Well, never mind that. Um, so our plan is to try and impress him, try and convince him that we can do it. I think also, it's the faster path. I'm not sure if it's the safer path. And that's why I, I'm thinking perhaps, first of all, letting Dala perhaps rest. We have time till we need till we need to be uh, to extend our visas. Also, uh, shopping is on. You know, that's always an option here. Um, just rest for a bit and then like, say in four, four days, we try again, this time with Bobby's help, perhaps. What do you want to do? Why four days? What's the point? Just to let Dalu rest, because once... Oh, that's but like, Yeah. I mean, we don't need to leave immediately. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Even yes, if he is satisfied, we exactly. can still say, okay, let's... He's been looking for a while now for years for someone yeah, he can rate for, this la for this last ship of his and so i don't think he minds waiting i mean you could just hear the wait like you could spend a couple months training like yeah. the only time sensitive thing you have is you're not sure how long elona will be capable of waiting yeah so uh, like elona will say like you know what there are sleep pods i can knock myself out for a couple months not healthy at all, but I will fucking do it. <laughs> um, tr training for a month seems too out of character. I'm just like too much. Do you guys want to do it? Time skip. Time skip. Okay. I mean, we can't time skip to level nine, so we it really doesn't do anything. Nine. It's more I mean, like a whole training montage. Is that necessary? It's luck, but yeah, it's a training montage. Um, so I, I think also, instead of a time skip, we could do uh, trying to impress him with Bobby and Lance, but that doesn't work because dice don't want. Maybe convince him through the story of Ilonu slash Dalu, whatever, that we're probably not the best shots, but we are uh, we're invested it, in... But you're the only shots he's got. But, uh, yeah, something, something like that, but we're invested in completing his quest in order to forward uh, uh, Dalu's quest. And they're all and interconnected I to, to each that, other. You know, if you've got an old gun, if you shoot enough times, you're gonna hit it eventually. A, a, a broken clock is twice a day. Is, is right the, uh, the other side of the occasion that he mentioned is uh, how many jumps will it take you to calibrate to get to uh, to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we are a fairly resilient, or like we have a lot of other skill skill sets other than oh, I'm my piloting. When it comes, <laughs> when it comes, when just when it comes to survival of whatever might we uh, we might encounter there, we do have quite a few talents in that regard as well. True, true, true. We we perhaps should also show them mock-up abilities in like vac suits, magic, no need for food, water, and so on. That also might impress them. Also, our combat capabilities in ship to ship combat. Is, that's a thing. Another planes? No, planes are generally pretty empty. That doesn't mean you're not going to meet Fine creatures. <laughs> yeah. How, how about we, uh, Lance and I, go back and just first try this thing together if we yes. can, can get, get it? And if we then need more training, then we can still decide to stay and train. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, you all should go. Like, the more helping yes. hands you have, the better. Yeah, we Actually, all know that Lance is super capable, so I don't. I don't think we need him. Where's the calculator at least? Actually, what's my Lance, what's my probability? Lance, he's a man. If he can do it, no one can. <laughs> nah, I might be on a lucky day. Yeah, but... seriously, as many people as want can try to help, but only plus one can happen. 
Like, you, the maximum we can get is a plus one. The maximum we can get a plus one. Like, technically, all of you can help him. Like, 10 people can try and help him. If you can prove to me that you are helping. Yeah, like, I mean, I hit shoot, it. I shoot the map. <laughs> a, a nine is technically, technically like my bottom floor, like the re result of a nine, because I have a 96% chance to hit a nine, 91 for a 10, 82 for an 11. So you've been hitting that bad? Yeah, I've been hitting in the t in the bottom percentages uh, quite a few times in a <laughs> row there. So it was uh, uh, below 10%. It's like he's uh, saying you need to be like three the top percent. Like, the unlock you've been having is comparable yeah. to, the, to the skill you need to actually succeed. Um, no, it's like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. A nine ti uh, roll, ro rolling bin bin uh, beneath the nine on a 100 sided die three times in a row. You know what? Just remind me that's never what I make managed. a roll for a pilot check if it's below nine because that's pointless. <laughs> it's. That's... Well, I mean, not. I mean, it can happen. It yeah, can happen. The four <laughs> ones <laughs> is it's possible. It's happening. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. Bye, yeah, bye, I'll Jamie. But bye, I'll Jamie. Talk to you soon. See ya. See you next week. See ya. Yep. Yeah. God damn it. What the fuck this? Right, let's go impress him. Alright. Yeah. Okay. So uh Bobby, Miles, yes. and I think I heard Wino. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're trying to help Lance. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna start first with uh with um Predict the map. I <laughs> <laughs> slice the map. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get my tools out and and try to montage the the map together. In the, no, I I'll, I'll just um I'll I, I I'll try to to assist him by reading reading the map and trying to scan the map for the most plausible routes that he can take to then choose like su subsections of uh, of maneuvers. Where I, I give him like okay we we have three these three options uh, like doing a sort of filtering. Right. Well, uh, that, that sounds like navigating to me, so that's gonna be pilot intelligence or dexterity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, no. Miles was like, uh, like looks like at the map was like super fucked up route, and Miles go, "C is easy. If I cut here and I cut here, we just get this part." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how do you help Miles? Um, if you do. So I'll, I'll help in a way that I've uh, been exper I experienced this Thursday in, in the operation I had. Um, I'll try. Yes, it's uh, based on the true story. <laughs> I'll try and have a conversation with Lance about what he's doing. And that makes him somehow more focused. So uh, let me explain a bit further in the operation I had. There was a nurse in the in the oper operator. Is that the right word? Um, surgeon. Surgeon. In, surgeon. Right. Yes, surgeon. Yes, thank you. And the surgeon was uh, having a conversation with me while I was going through this, and the nurse, and like ex explain stuff. And then like I had a question like mid stuff, and I'm like, oh, so how do you do that? And something like that. And then she had. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. <laughs> okay. Before I have you roll, what kind of a Actually, I'm going to ask that after I, we finish rolling. Just, just, okay. okay, okay. Yeah, I think that feels more secure. Um, right. That feels like you... Honestly, you can use either lead or talk here. I'm not sure I'm happy with giving you charisma here, but sure. Let's give you your chances. Because I think otherwise you don't have any. Twelve! Twelve. Okay. Uh, Winnell, are you helping anyway? Uh, sure. I'll I go up to him, and I'll do the thing where like, you give an aspiring speech, and I'll say to him, "This is the moment you've been praying for. This is what you've made for." And I'll slap him in the face, left and right. And while I'm doing that, I'm this definitely doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I gotta say, I don't. Uh, I prefer D and D, uh, like system and everything, but. The help mechanism and how like stupid and elaborate it could be, this is the best part. No, but you can also do that in fucking D&D. &D. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you can also it. do all of yeah. this D&D &D with advantage. 
By the way, uh, question when um, that spell that could transform you and give you bigger stats, can you only use it on yourself? Or can you use it on yeah, somebody else? So far, yeah. On yourself. Yes. Uh... Yeah. Wait, didn't you say uh, 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 recently to me that you can modify my my stats? Uh, there's another spell where I can shift around mm. attributes, mm. which I could learn in two weeks, three weeks, two weeks, so I think. That's going to be, that's gonna be zero, but your constitution plus three. Yeah, it can temporarily pump your hit points, or oh, not hit points, stats oh. from different places. Well, I was gonna give him the 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 uh, ten thousand senses, but I don't know how the simulator works. So I'm just going for the speed speed burst. He's twice as fast now. Burst. All right, let's just do this as um, again. Let's go cast magic, cast magic intelligence. See if you can uh, modify the magic to do things it's not supposed. To. I have um, cheated and modifier from my transformation. Don't. Be alarmed. Okay. okay, fair enough. Huh? Uh, let's uh, roll me pilot intelligence. With a okay, you don't want to. I'll just uh, add no modifiers. Yeah. You decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just add my okay. head if necessary. Come on, how many times can I roll this low? Okay, this is okay. Silly. That's okay. The two ones again. That's not bad. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. Um. Okay, so the thing is, is you start like solving the problems that um, Alexander gave you, and like you don't, you don't like them. No, it just you don't like them. It reminds you of the academy. It reminds you of their stupid lessons. It's not how you do things. It's very technical, very boring, very theory based. That's not how you run. So you kind of start getting annoyed, and Bob isn't really giving you any good advice. But then Mars kind of starts saying stupid stuff in the background, and first you want to snap at him, but then you slow down. Like, slow down and you go, alright, fine. I'm gonna play this game by your rules. I'll look at this from a different point. And you actually try to remember <laughs> the Academy did and actually put it onto the paper. And for this one moment, you don't like it. I think you don't like it. Like, correct me if I'm overstepping. No, I don't think he particularly enjoyed this part ever, yeah. so. But you basically like, like fine. I'll slow down and I'll write out the fucking solution to your fucking problem. And you write it out and you get the correct result, because of course you do. And you show it to Alexandru, who reads through it and goes. Well, I am thinking that a good night's rest has helped you. This looks a lot cleaner than yesterday. I still do not think... Well, to be fair, I do not think I would have ever found a navigator that could jump in one jump. That is truly, truly practically impossible. But... If you keep working like that, two, three jumps, 50% survival chance, no? that sounds better. Those are way better odds than I've had in a lot of races. This is not a race. I, I agree that I know. you are supposed to jump as quickly as you can, but you know, measure twice, cut once, is that the thing? Sometimes you need to slow down to do the thing in the right way. Oh, I cut twice measure once. <laughs> I 
I will, yes. I will tell you a secret. I have been giving you some tasks that would not be using the parameters you used. They have my ship work. And it is weird. This result is actually very, very good. I would give you a 9. 9 out of 10. It's pretty good. Now, the only real question is, uh, is it good enough for you to take the gamble? Because I'm confident that in practical circumstances, and especially with the crew, wherever we happen to make a, you know, quick uh, landing or stop rather in between, it'll be sufficient. Question is, do you think it's sufficient? Do you want to take 50-50 odds? That's more my question. Oh, wait, don't you have another test? This is this was one with the map, right? Wasn't there a simulator or something? He, he gives new test every time. Oh, right. okay. Okay, okay. Well, I am an excellent engineer, and uh, when we were in ship combat, I was able to modify the ship uh, ad hoc to whatever need was necessary in the moment. And that might... <laughs> you will love my ship. It was built to be modified on the fly. And mostly because we do not have time to make things standard. You know, they say that sometimes machines have a personality, yes? Uh, my ship has a multiple personality <laughs> You know, like you that. are giving a valid argument. You are part of a crew. You have proven that your navigator is... Competent. If you have not proven yourself to be consistent, at the very least you have proven yourself capable of reaching the highest standard. We will work with consistency. Let's see what the rest of you can do. Actually, let's go take a look at the ship, yes? I'd love that. I can sit really good and tell people what to do really well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you have no clue about Ooh. any of the things that they do individually. <laughs> so, <laughs> the best um, leader. He leads you to the ship and starts explaining, saying that uh, the ship is small. The ship is really small. They tried to cut down on space as much as possible to make the ship lighter. Um, it is built with long distance, long term exploration in mind. It has extended storage, has fuel scoops, uh, so instead it can jump only once in terms of, you know, real space times. It doesn't carry any additional fuel because, you know, like if you have fuel bunkers, you're supposed to refuel them somewhere. If there are no civilization around, that's pointless. You need a fuel scoop. Uh, and it has a lot of stuff for exploration, so uh, onboard laboratories, uh, sensors, scanners, boom, boom, boom. Uh, it does have a workshop for flight maintenance, uh, and it is rated for plane of water, which is very important. Uh, also because the ship was built from scratch, uh, yes, Elite Dangerous. Wait, oh, right, you and me played. Um, uh, because the ship was built from scratch, he basically used the, the point where when you build the ship, you can build in uh, mods and mod. stuff into the hull. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they, again, like, this ship has very little space. It has a lot of power, because it has a very power-hungry power drive. They have optimized the drive. Uh, it has very fast engines, which can be overloaded. And it does technically have uh, both a weapon, a decent weapon, 
and uh, like basically the same thing you have like one time overcharge for the weapon uh, plus, because it is rated for plane of water, the weapon is concealable. So it removes itself into the hull of the ship, so it doesn't get in the way. And technically, in real space, it would mean nobody knows you have a weapon. Uh, also, however, because pocket is a prototype, uh, some of its fittings are built in. Like, for example, the water rating which normally takes mass, is built into it. You can't remove it, but it doesn't take any mass. Nice. And a few more things that are kind of like, it's very built for a very specific task. Are, are they maxed out on power and hull? Uh, they have technically three free power somehow, but no mass. Can we, maybe we can get our uh, shower over here. <laughs> Uh, wanna try ballpark how much this ship costs? It's still a frigate. It's smaller than uh, the Fable. Five million. Uh, is it in the millions? I don't think it's in the. Mil it's close to the mil to the one mil. What? No oh, wait. The drive oh, yeah, alone is like half a mil. Yeah, all the upgrades. Uh. I would. Uh, I'm gonna I go with three and a half. I would be surprised it's if it's even even uh, seven digits. I'd go for two, eight. two point eight million. Uh, we know. Uh, two. What? What did you say? <laughs> I said, <I> said <laughs> two point eight, but yeah, two point seven nine. Five, two point too close. I'm the furthest, probably. Just say uh, two point seven nine. It's okay. Say twenty, you'll get it. <laughs> two two point two. I don't know. Um, it's still a frigate, so technically, well, not technically. It costs only uh, four million two hundred thousand credits. The lens was yeah. the closest. Well, wasn't I the closest with five million? Yeah, but yeah, then you changed your number. I didn't change my number. No, he said five. Also, he's still closer because you're eight hundred thousand away. He's seven hundred thousand away. Did he say 3.5? I, I, I thought I he said, said 2.5. Yes, 3.5. No. It cost 4.2. Yeah, yeah. So you're 700 Four. away, and he's Yeah, 800. and he's 800 away. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the truth was in the middle. <laughs> uh, it has a maintenance of 210,000 credits every six months. Hmm. That's so okay. Basically, like, he's like, you know, I can't really, like, afford to throw these ships away. They cost a lot of money, even for me. <laughs> And I don't have enough either to throw them away anyway. Uh, in any case, uh, a few more details about the construction of the ship. So, um, I just look into the picture. So, like, that big sail on the side is the same sail you have, the Capture Magic sail. Uh, the turret, the turret is basically the plasma beam, the uh, sun beam, which is retractable. Oh, okay. Um, the um, uh, tower in the back, like the thing in the middle, is a cockpit. Uh, the horizontal fins on both protrusions contain uh, sensors and arcane countermeasure devices because they need you know, separation and space for triangulation and correct work. Uh, the vertical fins and uh, like the thing that sticks out of the ship contain radiators uh, the problem with the ship is they put as many of the bits into the hull as possible because so this ship is not very good at giving away heat like your ship is much better at this because you have giant radiators they're on the outside and you don't have much power. The ship has a lot of power, not as many radiators, and they're on the inside. So it overheats easily. And uh, the like greedy, greaty thing uh, that connects it to the ship is the grates of the fuel scoop. Uh, the bottom part of the ship is fully engineering. It has a drive, it has engines. Uh, I think that's all that manages to fit in there. 
um, yeah, drive engines, fuel tank, yeah, uh, default fuel tank, a generator, you know, that kind of stuff. The upper deck has living quarters, uh, medbay, uh, like equipment storage, normal storage, because the ship does have like basically like 20 tons of storage space, because otherwise, you know, it would with you. Uh, a workshop, uh, fuel scoop, like refinery facility, and the laboratory. <laughs> also, because I'm fucking nuts, I did end up building the ship. Oh my god, let's go! You must have been very bored. I was like, I I'm gonna build the ship very, very fast, spend very little time on this, mm. then I woke up four hours later. <laughs> My back hurt mm -hmm. like hell. Wait, so that, that's not the cockpit. Is it the cockpit? Uh, this okay. is the engine. So, um, let's start from the bottom deck. Uh, from here. I need to zoom further. Alright. Okay. So, um, again, like, uh, the first and second deck are placed, you know, like, where they are, so as you can see, like uh, the top deck overhangs the engines, uh, and like the bottom deck is shorter than the up top deck. Uh, obviously, in the bottom we have engines, uh, and actually, let me give you the um, uh, part for the, the ship. Cockpit. It will be in uh, PCs and vehicles, Pathfinder 4. Those are the stats. So the ship is faster than yours. It has four speed. Uh, it has some armor because its hull is made of metal. A slightly higher AC. Well, actually, its armor is comparable to yours because Bobby modified your armor. This one is just by default. Um, so then after the engines, we have, you know, like generators, capacitators, whatever. We have the one fuel tank that carries one jumps worth of fuel. Uh, this bit in the very center is basically like the um, compartment which contains the weapon, the retractable weapon. Uh, on the first floor, they have like the you know, like capacitators for the gun, and if you look on the upper deck, you see the gun itself. It like um, if you want to use it, it lifts out of the ship and rotates where you need it to rotate. Um, it's freaking cool. Moving back to the lower deck, this is the single, like, this is a weak part of the ship. This is the only part where you can go from first deck to second deck. Because I could not fit it anywhere else. Uh, it is technically a levitator, like arcane levitator, that just like you step on it, it hops you up or hops you down. In case you run out of power, it does have a ladder, because redundancy. Uh, this is the Slidstream Drive. Uh, or, well, part of it. And then there is heavy, closed, lock, reinforced doors, which are currently closed. Um, I went time saving on this. I've reused a lot of the assets I've used for Fable. Technically, the design should be even more different because different manufacturers, different factions. But I was like, fuck it. It will take too much time to design them anew. I don't have enough <laughs> assets, so Definitely. I, just, I modified them. I made them look cooler, but that's all I did. Um, Looks like an insane dude. Top deck. So we get out of the levitator. Uh, we have the workshop. Like this is a workshop. Uh, so like everything Bobby needs. Uh, it's it's not more advanced than the one you have. I mean, it is technically a tier five workshop. Uh, but it also doesn't have any of the old stuff, so you won't be doing any, like, old-school smithing or whatever on it. It's more, you know, like, modern machinery, 3D printing, milling, arcane, forging, and so on. Uh, going forward, up, uh, we have uh, tower, bathroom, single one, uh, medbay, uh, storage. This is weapons locker and uh, ship's locker and armory. So any equipment you might need most likely is there. Uh, tiny kitchen. Tiny uh, common space. 
I love how you put that so far. There. Only windows uh, that look outside and tiny bedroom. It has only two beds because this is not a lecture ship. It has six people who work in shifts of eight hours, which means only two people are supposed to sleep at the same time. <laughs> Oh my god, we share sheets. Yes. Well, you don't have to share sheets, but you definitely share beds. I mean, to be fair... Well, no, someone can also sleep in the fucking yeah. medical chamber. I mean... We bring uh, it in. Sure. Uh, technically, like, big ships, they don't have enough beds for everybody because then half of your ship has beds. Right. I don't think it's that sparse, usually. I think it's more like two-thirds of the crew, but whatever. Um... Then uh, you see that like all those things, like like this stuff is basically radiators, uh, the white stuff. Uh, very shitty sails, that was the worst part I did. Uh, so in the middle is fuel refinery, because again, this is the only way it works. Uh, fuel, like, air is cooked in here, gets processed, gets, I don't know, condensed, refined, Enhanced, I don't know. Fuel comes out of here, and then if you compare uh, second deck and first deck, it goes down and gets into the fuel tank. Uh, also, technically, like you can refuel the ship in the in the docks through this pipe. Um, then going down, uh, we have the what is called advanced uh, lab which helps you analyze, explore, and so on. It's actually quite useless uh, for adventuring, but whatever, the ship is supposed to have a lab. So it has Isn't Ilono lab. quite thrilled with this? This looks like Ilono's... I they're rats, it, they're it, living if he stuff. Was, if he was coming uh, along, yes. Uh, but yeah, it has like... If we had a scientist, yeah, this yeah, would yeah, work yeah, well, yeah. yes. Uh, I mean, some people, some of you can work it. It has like... Think for manufacturing, canalizing, it has a laser, it has like containment devices, it has an aquarium, it has like alchemy, geology table, it has like a pod scanner thing, I don't know. It was late. <laughs> I was running out of ideas. Uh -huh. uh, then again, the only place I could fit it, tiny storage space. Uh, and again, you can't put much in it because otherwise it gets in the way. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, this is the airlock. This is the wet airlock, uh, so it can get like pressurized, depressurized. Uh, so if you need to get through a plane of water, that's what you generally need to do, and it gets out of here. Um, then here we get into basically like that shaft uh, that you can see on the picture. Uh, up the ladder, cockpit has a pilot, navigator and technically a second hatch that goes onto the fin next to the cockpit. So you can use this one um, if you want to like fly out of the ship, you dock in port and the levels come up. If you are floating on the water, then this part will be like, you know, like a submarine tower above water, so you can use it to get outside. Uh, it can kind of uh, like, pump gas and water, but not as well as this one. It's like, one person at a time only. Um, so, battle stations, like, again, pilot, navigator, uh, gunner. And First gunner? I didn't see. Can you ping me too? Ah, yes. Because, again, very little space. And I guess engineer is chilling somewhere on the bottom deck. And Miles is in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Shitting. Yeah, most likely. Um, also, like, Bobby, as you're going around, you basically, like, notice that, like, Fable, it was all standardized. Um, it was very thought through, very ergonomical, all the pipes in the walls, all the cables in the walls, uh, like, everything in its niche. You have only as much uh, as you usually would need to access, like crawl space and so on. This ship is like, we had very little space, we had a lot to put into it, 
and we want it stuff to be in a way that makes it extremely easy to access for maintenance and fixing and replacement. Fuck safety of crew. Fuck crew space. Like... Fuck the crew. We're giving more space to the slipstream drive and you being able to get to it from any spot because you will need to. And we're saving like the house space and putting cables where you can technically trip all over them. But it's saving no space. Yeah, but it also has a very prototype. -y yeah, it is, it is very prototype. It's like... If they build like 10 more like this, it will most like like move stuff around, hide the cables, hide the pipes. It's a prototype, they just built it. Um, I have a question to Alexandru. Yeah. And I will say, what's behind the door? Uh... The big stuff in the first deck is the conventional drive just up you can travel I'm trying to remember the numbers basically this is the drive for yeah behind the drive is the etheric drive or the one that will make the jumps If you want me to be able to fix everything here, I need access to that. If you want me on the ship. <laughs> and oh. you would need to explain it to me so I'm able to fix it if something breaks or to modify it <laughs> if necessary. Here is the thing. I will show you what is behind the door. I... Well, show me what you can do. Explain to me how this works. And he points like towards the conventional drive, which is still yeah. telephone. You're like looking around, you're like, you're like remembering your drive, and you're like, this drive should take up double the space it is taking if it is supposed to output the jump it is outputting. You understand the flow chart of it, but like half of the engine are comp Slavic components, most likely. A uh, contemporary version of Slavic components you've never seen before. So roll me a fixed intelligence skill check. I ask Buddy for help analyzing this shit. Uh, what was it? Fixed intelligence? <laughs> yes. 12. Solid 12s all around. That's the first roll Low, of 10. The low average roll for him. <laughs> Um, yeah. Buddy is actually no help because this is not his specialty and there are no okay. uh, plugins that he can actually use. Okay, fair enough. Because, like, this is reverse engineered, but it does not have, you know, like, old Slavic stuff that Buddy can do. Well, though, is really good, actually. Um, and... Uh, like, you still, like, you go, like, I have no idea how this part was constructed, but based on the design and what I've seen, this is what it should do. And you are correct. Now, you still don't think you, like, if something gets damaged, you might be able to fix it. If something gets broken, you most likely won't have the skills to fix it, and you definitely won't have the tools on the ship to fix it. If you understand that. Yeah, so it's essentially. This if equipment it breaks, is. Yeah, if it's bracked, uh, bro broken, this equipment is not fixable without a TL5 dock. Yeah. So this so is you, where we you, sacrifice crew members in order not to that, damage that, the that, That's... Yeah, yes. I mean, that, we should that's still kind, bring kind Watanabe, of, that's what I'm hearing. Kind of, kind of typical for exploration yeah. ships, I guess, that uh, that 
as long as they're uh, as long as they're damaged, you can get them to work somehow. But the moment something really completely breaks, you're completely like, fucked. Like, Bobby, you're like you're basically like telling like to Alexander. I mean, like you're like, I mean, if I were to build a second ship like this, I would make it ten meters longer and rearrange a couple things, and most likely I can increase crew quarters a little bit, and. Like, Alexander doesn't disagree with you. He's just like, well, we'll work with what we have. If it works and I start working on commercial ships, eh, maybe you can work for me. Put money here. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, now you want to wanna show me what's, yeah. what's uh, behind door one? One second. So we just like, again, to go over the stats of the ship. Yeah. Very funny hull type because it's a prototype. <laughs> uh, a little cargo, a little fuel, good speed, decent AC, good armor. Well, good armor for a figure. <laughs> uh, better hit, much better hit points than your ship. Uh, mm -hmm. Low mass, good like, power. What, what do you mean much? It's like five hit points more. You have 20 hit points? I think so. Pretty sure we have 20. Maybe. Let me check. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah, I thought you had 15. No, oh, graph okay. Oh, wait, that's a graph flyer. I mean, 25% no, more hit points is not bad. <laughs> the fable wait, no. has to say it has 20 hit points. Yeah. Uh, still more hit points. Uh, yeah. uh, they do have like a much larger weapons than the fable have. Uh, it has plus a lot of more damage. But you yep. pay attention, it is more like a generalized weapon. So it has lower AP, it's a general weapon, like it is more meant to like fight ships of comparable size and armaments. Uh, fittings. Uh, Lens, you might be interested at checking the special property of the Cyric Drive, because uh, it does allow you to temporarily shift to a serial plane, which could be useful under circumstances. Uh, and by recharge from a powerful arcane source, I mean either you need dock at an at least TL5 port and recharge it there. Uh, basically, you need to recharge it the way you would refuel a ship, or through a fuel scoop. Instead of refueling, you recharge it. Uh, Amphibious separation built in, lab, written it, extended store. So, again, like you never know how uh, long the ship needs to travel. Not big enough to have like food production, so it has more stores. Uh, fuel scoop, very important. Survey sense array. Uh, what's his name? Dal would love it. Not another would love it if he comes. A workshop is workshop. Uh, armory, ship lock again. Like, not sure what's gonna happen. So the ship has as much internal maintenance and production and equipment as it can. Uh, most of it, like some of it, is built in and built in what's again you can see. Uh, more compact drive, more speed, uh, weapon can hide, and uh, weapon can shoot more to again like, give you that boost in a fight. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I can en totally envision like a really fun um, exploration campaign with a ship like this. If you have all of the roles filled, that would probably also be fucking uh, dope. I mean, that's you build a crew around it, and yeah, yeah, exactly. The ship would be a bit different because, like, again, like if it was not a prototype, they would have increased crew quarters because uh, you can't live like 120 days in this space. You'll go crazy. You'll just go crazy. Though. I don't know. I guess it compares to submarine in a way. <laughs> They're also very tiny. It does, yeah. I, I, I designed it a lot more based on the submarine rather than based on the ship. So, uh, but also like I really like, I found the picture first, and I'm like, I'm like, so how do I transfer <laughs> this picture into the design of the ship? Like, how can I explain it? Like the picture is stupid. It's it's but supposed it, it, to work, it, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's still easier this way around, yeah, right? Yeah, the picture is the more important I part to have for the... I spent a lot less time on this ship than on the Fable, because with Fable, like, I 
The Fable had a lot more interesting hull design and I spent a lot of time redesigning Fable hull to give it a fun geometry. Like here I spent very little time on designing the shape of the hull because it was very simple and more like how the pieces in the ship need to be placed in order to fit in the ship but also do everything the ship is supposed to do. All right. Mm. Anyway. Uh, pa, 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 pa. He opens the doors. He opens the doors. He opens the doors. And in there you see a creature. Oh, yes. Is... You do. You see a large tank. There is a control panel next to it. But really, aside from the tank, there is nothing that is. It is connected to like the ship's infrastructure, the cables running from it. But there is a tank filled with some kind of liquid. And floating in the tank is a long serpentine creature of green color. It has, however, oh. a hood, like a collapsed hood around its head. Though it looks more like a cobra than an eel. I didn't have an asset for a cobra, so I used an eel. <laughs> and yet, as the creature turns around and looks towards you, its face is... Scaly, serpentine, but there are also humanoid features to it. It is much flatter, and there Hello. is deep intelligence in its eyes. Is that the one we saw at the lab before? So no one. Um, Winnell's, uh, in Winnell's parents' lab? I don't think that's the one. Uh, I don't... It wasn't with the human figure shape. What are you talking about? Oh, Winnell's... that one. Uh, no, no. That one was... Uh, I think it had tentacles? Yeah, different. I think I remember it that way too. Yeah. So, I think it had tentacles was a lot slimer. This one like looks basically like... Um, Large, in Dindy terms, large cobra with a like human slash snake face. I don't Are we think talking out, we out of character to fix it. <laughs> out of character, and Naga. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Naga have hands, no? No, no. not in Dindy. Really, I didn't know that. Um, who is that? It is a very important part of the drive. That it able to plane shift. It is a navigator to your navigator. And is that navigator here voluntarily? It was created for this purpose. By whom? Elf? Have you ever taken a part of Slovak ship? No. Nope. Uh, um. These... These are the pilots that they... Interesting. So... They what are they called? Uh... Well, I do not know how the people of Slovos have called them when they have designed them. These are... Is Dalu with you? Uh, probably. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Either way, as much of a construct as... Well, Dalu is. They are living creatures, but they were designed, created, and somehow made. 
they have been made with ways to help them work the way they do. They are immortal, like jellyfish, but smart. They do not eat, they do not breathe, they do not drink, they can live forever, and if you kill it, it comes back. Do not kill it, your ship will not work if it is dead. And I did not have a better place or more armor to put around it, but make sure that you don't ram anything parts of your ship. <laughs> Such a bad place to put this. Well, I'm sorry, but the drive had to be closer to the capacitators. I have tried swapping them around, there was not enough power. Um... Okay. I tried. I want to look at look at the creature. Huh? Uh, and I want to see if it engages me, like, if it looks at me as well. It looks at you. It's not just you, it is aware of you. I ask, do you understand me? Um, Alexander goes, uh, tank does not, it blocks sound. It is better that way. Trust me. <laughs> it screeches all day. <laughs> does it always scream in pain and fear if you don't block the sound? Is that what you're telling me? No, but it is smarter than you would think. It is better it... that you fly the ship than it flies the ship. It is better if you decide where the ship goes than it decides where the ship goes. Why? Where because would the ship go? it was not built for us to be used. If it makes you feel any better, it has never expressed any resentment, has never attacked us, it has never tried to escape, though it has opportunities. This vessel is as much for its sustainability and protection as it is for yours. It would not survive the expedition if I just let it roam the ship, nor Do would I be fly? able to fly it. Do I buy this? Um, show me an inside check. So, uh, uh, just out of character, oh, see if Jesus I understand. Is is this basically the uh, AI pilot in case our pilot doesn't work? Um, I came up with this idea before I went, all oh, right, I ripped up Dune, but this is basically the Dune Navigator. Wait, Dune no Navigator is... how Dune you, Navigator You haven't read Dune? I, I read Dune, right. but like long ago. So, okay. Watch the latest The Guild, movie. It right? It shows very well. Yes, the Guild. Uh, it basically has those tanks on the ships with. And they need the drugs in order to do it. On drugs who are the ones who actually do the jumps. Yeah, and they need the spice <laughs> in order to no jump. I have no idea what's happening in Dune, so I have no idea. Okay. I don't have you Have anything. you seen the first movie? No. Oh, oh yeah, okay. so he has zero idea. It doesn't I have, good. You would probably have to explain the entire fucking movie so I can get this. They reference. are, <laughs> they are mutated okay. creatures. Okay, long story. That in Dune universe, in order to travel faster than light, you need a mutated, drugged up human to figure out the way. Oh, okay. And the drug is uh, entirely Spice. necessary, and Spice. if you don't get it anymore, Spice. you die. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're addicted and to the spice. That's what mutates you. That's what basically gives them like psychic abilities, and that's why spice is the most valuable commodity in Dune universe. Because without spice, there's no space travel. No, okay, got it. Co no convenient commercial space travel, and that's and why the guild controls everything. Because they're the only ones who can do this. Jumpy, I mean. Uh, yeah. Is the um? <laughs> I have so many fucking questions. And yeah, I was like, like <laughs> what could jump a ship? What could pilot a ship? And I'm like, a snake. A snake. <laughs> no, like, I, I, like after I read the lore of Nuggets, I'm like, they were made for this. They are perfect for this. 
They do have plane shift, right? They like spell casting uh, or does even have plane shift. They don't have plane shift because plane shift is level seven. They do have banishment. Banishment. Uh, they're intelligent. <laughs> they're wise. They are literally immortal. Uh, and yeah, they're immortal. <laughs> they're fucking immortal. And like their know. lore feeds to like yeah maybe like Slavic people disappeared and Nagas were left behind as abandoned tools basically. You know what we should in Discord I say that looks like a new group member for our Discord chat. <laughs> if it speaks yeah. uh, common, right? Does it know? Does it need to know the language? I don't know. Um. It's also more of a joke just, idea just, or joke. Just uh, uh, for your information, I say this in Discord. If we open a channel with this creature, and it turns out that it is sentient, and it is being held against its will, I will not fucking do anything for these motherfuckers here. I will break this creature out or take it away or I will steal the ship but this looks like fucking slavery to me and I'm not on board with that just to be clear did you say slavery or sniggery <laughs> uh, also, this partic also the particular creature is Grant's cousin <laughs> yeah no <laughs> Grant's cousin <laughs> <laughs> slavery Por con, por qué no los dos, eh? Slithery. Slithery. Hela. Uh, yeah, fuck, 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 let's try it. I'm, I'm fucking intrigued. I'm definitely not going to be able to fix this, apparently, but... But perhaps Widow could. Uh, I will, I will still ask Alexandru to, to tell me how this creature is connected to the rest of the ship so i know how to fix anything that is connected to its tank the only thing you can fix are basically the uh, cabling that uh, connects it uh, to the drive uh, to the what? slipstream drive but what does the creature conceptually do in in, in the engine is it uh, giving it fuel, or is it more like I think you said it's more like navigation, where to? It's jump navigation, to, right? and technically, this creature is the component that opens the warp the portal, the jump, the gate. Yeah. Mm. What does the screen and the table have? Uh, the screen, if you zoom in, basically. Like, has a model of this creature and keeps track of its vitals, abilities, and so on. Uh, table is there just again, like a work desk to uh, take care of this creature. Though you don't really need it because, again, it doesn't eat, it, you don't need to give it food, it doesn't sleep, it doesn't drink. So it is completely fine contained within its container. <laughs> Technically. Supposedly. Did it ever speak to you while you handled it? Look. There are parts of this ship's design that I truly cannot review. Because you're afraid that we might rip it off? Or because you're so ashamed of how you're misusing this creature that you don't want to say it out loud? This creature is being used for the purpose it was meant to be. Um, the other question then, how how did you come by this uh, piece in your ship? I have asked you if you have ever taken a part Slavic ship. Have you ever met a working Slavic ship? No. Nope. Never well, seen yeah. one. I found a broken one. That is amazing. As much as I would like to take credit for designing all of this, I found some of it and I fixed it as best I could. 
and the things I could not fix, I understood, built from my own part. So, okay, I think I understand. So when you're saying that parts uh, you, you can't explain, it's literally you cannot explain it because you kind of don't understand it, but you were able to make it work. If you dump it down, yes. If you make your trip in return, well, hopefully that will answer a lot of questions. I have theories. No one has returned to tales, says yet. I go up to the side of the glass like a like a curious kid and just put my hand on it. Does does the naga like act differently? Is it doing anything inside? By the way, I mean, right now it's basically like looking at the all. And okay. So yeah, so like you don't get the feeling that it's hearing you, but it's like reacting to the presence. It it's kind of reacting like an you know, old dolphin in the uh, aquarium. Mm -hmm. Like it is interacting with you, but I wonder. Uh, I. Mm. Does it pay extra attention to my legs? Um. Does it is is there some? I mean, I mean, it has a human face, right? Or a, a resemblance of yeah, it? I sent a I sent a five E version of Naga picture in the chat. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out if if it senses some if, if there's like a sense of recognition in that part of me uh, if it if if that kind of changes its behavior towards me or per, its perception of me. Uh, make me um in, let's go inside check. Yeah, I'm really good at those. <laughs> Fuck. Five. Consistent rolls below the average, my man. Holy shit. Um, you... I, I, I struggled to come up with what to tell you on such a roll. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna tell, say that whatever Bobby believes is true. Is the thing is what he believes. Fuck it, I'll Discord. It's gonna be fun, or I'll try to. Yep. Wouldn't that require you casting a spell in front of uh, Alexandru right here? Here is the thing. A lot of people, they play D&D. &D. Um, forget that even if all the spell says is it requires like a creature you can see, there still needs to be a line of effect between you and your target. So by raw magic rules of D&D, &D, there is a window between you and your target, you cannot hold person it, you cannot miss the step outside. Huh. You can dimension door because it doesn't require you to see anything or anything. But just as the glass will stop a fire bolt, it will stop another can effect from going. And you try to connect it to Discord, the bounce of the of the glass. And that is most likely the part that uh, Alexander was referring to when he said it is in the tank, both for its protection and for you. Do not feed the Naga. It does not require sustenance. That's why I don't feed souls. it. <laughs> but that those uh, on it, on those it feeds just for pleasure, not for sustenance. Well, I 
can't say that I'm not motherfucking intrigued by this. I say this in, in this. I say this in Discord. I say it out loud. Uh, okay. I think I've seen enough. I know which part I would be able to fix. Um, if there's some sort of test that you would like me to do, then. Oh, I, I think you have passed your test. Okay. And when I'm on the ship, the ship can do a little bit more things. Uh, can we continue next week? Yes. yes. Okay. Let's continue next week. It's super late now, and I get up late. at 6 tomorrow. All right. Oh.